that button. Good evening and welcome. My name is Rob, aka Lantern Noir, and we are playing Dungeons and Dragons tonight with these amazing people that have volunteered to give up their Sunday evening to sit around the virtual game table and throw virtual dice to talk about virtual characters. Yeah, that, you know, it sounds a lot, it's a lot cooler than it sounds on paper. It's kind of like describing a modern board game to somebody where about two thirds of the way through the rules, you're like, don't worry, but the game really is fun. Now, on your action, you can do five different things. <laughs> uh, yes, there. Um, Spinny has dressed and prepared for the a theater, as it is. Um, so let me do that. Chat controls are active. Cool. So those will be working tonight. I'm going to refresh them to be sure they're really working. Um, and then we'll go around the table with a round of introductions as to who we are, where to find us on the internets, um, who we're playing tonight, and we need an introductory ice-breaking question. So I guess the question would be, if this character had the choice of what to see at the theater, what would they go out to see? Since you didn't pick the performance they're going to tonight, um, if they had a choice of theaters in Waterdeep to go to, what kind of show would they be hoping to find? And in order to make that interesting, we are going to kick off and start that with Liz. <laughs> Yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm Liz. Uh, I play Lorelei, who is a half elf rogue who is um, spends time being an entertainer, mainly to annoy the elven side of her family, you know, because she was never quite elven enough. And so now we just prefer to be a total embarrassment. And if I had to pick, what we would be going to this evening, it would definitely be an all male review. And perfect timing, Rob. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't on purpose at all. <laughs> <sighs> and then we'll slide over. Spinny? Hi, I'm Spinny, uh, also Jeremy, and I'm playing Nala, the dark elf moon druid, who really is here to study like what the topside people do. It's kind of like her nature documentary that she's going to bring back and show everyone, like, this is what life is really like on the other side. Um, so it doesn't matter what play at all. She's not there to see the play at all. She wants to see what it's like to go to a theater with people from the surface. That works. And Arwen? I am Arwen Atreides, and I am playing Chrysanthemum Coriolis, um, the halfling cleric. And I think Chrysanthemum would be into anything that requires or encourages any amount of audience participation. Um, she likes she likes watching the show, but she also likes if you're like encouraged to be be part of take part in some form um she likes shows but she has a hard time sitting still and quietly for too long fair fair and last but absolutely not least ari macchio ari uh you can find me on twitch um i'm playing as sharkira sharkira the dark elf wizard and Let's see. I feel like Sharkira would be very interested in any play that has any sort of action or combat of any kind, and also hoping that the snack bar has at least bacon. Some sort of bacon, bacon-flavored something. A little candied bacon with the show? Yes. Perfect. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good kind of bacon to eat while watching a show, and it's not... It's all of them. To me. <laughs> all Any of them. All of them. All the above. It's like it's like too messy or like too loud. You're that person who's going crunch, crunch, crunch. Oh, the Shakira bacon. doesn't care. No, she, <laughs> she don't care. Like yeah, at the end you're like, oh no, now my hands are. I have to sit here for two hours with greasy hands and face. Problem solved. Well, more bacon. More yeah, I guess more bacon. <laughs> just, Solution. You just need more bacon, and yeah. that's that's not a problem. And then my name is Rob, a.k.a. Lantern Noir, and I am everybody else. You can find me here uh, Sundays and Wednesday nights doing Dungeons & Dragons at 7 p.m. Eastern, give or take. 
um, and then Saturday and Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Eastern doing uh, my new rotation of Medieval Dynasty, XCOM, and Beat Saber, which seems to, I start Zen with my coffee, then I get panicked with XCOM, and then I just get that frustration of getting xcom out with Beat Saber, which I have to be careful because I did indeed throw my back out yesterday playing it. Oh. Live on stream. Oh, no. in, in, in a stream titled let's show the kids what real music is <laughs> well that feels very on brand yeah i was about to say that's a, exactly what we should have expected to happen <laughs> you know we we sometimes forget that age is a real thing it's like you know i'm I, it may age is just a number i can be anything i want to be and then your body goes bitch please that's yeah. what Advil is for. <sighs> yeah, sure. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, so speaking of Advil, um, yeah, that's not a segue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, where are we going with this? Just going with it. I, I, was, I wasn't sure, but I was going to try. Um, anyway, so when we last left the party... We, you had success. The party has been in pursuit of various entities that have been controlling the fabled Stone of Golor, which, according to legend, will open a vault somewhere in Waterdeep that contains a half a million gold coins embezzled by the former open lord of Waterdeep. Eh, somebody. It's one of the never that guy. Yeah. It's not Rainier, because that's the one you know. It's his dad, um, whose name I can't remember right now. And it's going to take me forever to look up, because it's one of those throwaway comments early on. Anyway, when he was the Open Lord, allegedly, he embezzled a huge pile of gold and hid it somewhere in Waterdeep. And the Stone of Golar holds the key to opening that vault. It's been, been within feet of the troll skulled um, manor before it was snatched up by agents and whisked across town. You tracked it to the uh, home of the Grawlhund Villa. You had a, a serious incident there getting in and finding out who had what only to find that once again, the stone had made its way out. The last session you tracked it to a butcher shop slash mob dump site where again the stone had moved on from there you tracked it back into town to a, a back alley where you were in the middle of an ambush between two groups you chased someone away from the ambush uh, found that she had purchased a ticket to the theater for the next night and disappeared into the shadows this would be where we pick up tonight as you gather up in the late afternoon at troll skull manor and have an opportunity to first hatch a plan and then put it into action the key assumption being that the thief from the night before is likely to be in, in attendance at the show a show you happen to have four tickets to i will turn the table over to the players to begin to hatch a plan Huh. I'm not great at the planning. <laughs> That's not my strong suit. <laughs> well, most importantly, what's what's the dress code for this thing? Do our tickets say anywhere? <laughs> Are we fancy or, or, or casual? Yeah, is this very fancy important? Or, yeah. I mean, fancy, clearly. I mean, if we're going to go to the theater, we're going to dress fancy. <laughs> I like <it. laughs> Excellent. The prison. Is this like the Metropolitan or like Shakespeare in the Park? Uh, the, the Brisbane Bright Theater is um, not it is not in the high town. It is not a super, the tickets were not super expensive. Uh, it seats I want to say a couple hundred people at most, and they're mostly tradesmen would tend to frequent it. So we're not Shakespeare in the Park. We're not in the lower pits of the Rose Theater. Um, but we're not we're not going to be sitting next to any of the open the, the open lord or potentially any hidden lords while we're there. Okay, sounds good. So somewhere in the middle of uh -huh. that spectrum. 
you could probably wear your typical like day-to-day -day adventuring gear and not be taken too like be too out of place um the weapons might be a gray area They might, no ghost, they might not no be cricket with that. Well, I mean, it's winter time, so we can wear our cloaks and sort of mm. you know, just cover true. things up, right? This is absolutely true. You probably could. So is anyone going to recognize this person? I mean, Nala, you would probably be able to smell them in your other form, but... Yeah, how good a glance, how good a look were we able to get at this person's face or... It, they're... I don't think anyone got a look at their face because it was like we got we saw her up on the roof oh. and then she just ran for it. Yeah, that's fair. And then we followed her. That's a good point. Um, I would say that you might, it, it, it comes down to you, maybe you can recognize her, but it's going to be uh, nobody got a great look at her face when she went off running. Unless you get lucky and she wears the same cloak again. Okay, All right. Hmm. Um, do the seats well, have do our, do the tickets have assigned seats or would we like pick where in the theater we get to sit? It's a general general admission tickets. Okay. What's what's playing? Uh, let's see the. The tickets identify that the show performing is called Blood Wedding, a play of love, jealousy, and death. Ooh. Ooh. So we I could think all try our characters and... actually would be interested in watching this play. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just here, we'll watch the play, and then maybe we'll see her while we're watching this play. Something for everyone. So we could... Like, I'm thinking we could try and, if we get there early-ish, we can kind of try and situate ourselves strategically throughout the theater and kind of see if we get a glimpse of anything that looks familiar or, failing that, anything suspicious. Uh, Great idea. We could Let's also have somebody kind of like on the outside, like around, if there's like a snack bar or just kind of you know, looking innocent, loud, looking for the restroom or, um, yeah, something like that, maybe. Well, Sharkira probably shouldn't be the one by the snack bar because she's not going <laughs> to go through with the mission. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'll, I'll circulate. Okay. Do we, should we have someone outside? We think the meeting's going to go down like actually in the theater. Well, they got a ticket, so that kind of implies having to go in, unless True. they're trying to throw us off. True. Which could also be could be a decoy. The DM will contribute this much if we had not had to stop and potentially change the cast up between sessions. There would have been no time between her going buying her ticket and going into the theater. And you were and you were arriving to see that she had gone into the theater. Ah, so she would have been in the theater. Yes. Okay. Great. Okay. The the DM will contribute to the table that <laughs> she will be in the theater because that's what's supposed to happen according to the story arc. Um, okay. That will that will definitely be happening. It would okay. it would have if we hadn't had to stop last week and swap a few players yes. out. Sounds Is good. there a back door to the theater? Uh, most theaters have um, some kind of a back door. Uh, generally speaking, there's like the actors' entrances, which are separated from the the main entrance. I'm a little bit concerned. Mm. Do we have any? Do we have any way to communicate? Does anybody have? I don't think we do. Uh, I don't know. Know. Well, let me see. Because I can change <laughs> my spells when I rest, so I could be like, "Oh yeah, I totally did that." <laughs> I'm fine my with that. I don't even know if I have anything in my thing. Let me see. I'm contemplating maybe seeing if I can talk my way in the actor's entrance. You know, if I come carrying an instrument and looking like a, you know, entertainer person. That's 
definitely a possibility. I can dig with that. I mean, I can do animal messenger. <laughs> I don't really have the, uh, <laughs> I'm not, you know, what's, I'm not See? Oracle from Batman, or but um, I don't know if this would be good. That's not a uh, animal messenger. That's not a, that's not a cantrip, though, is it? No, it would be using spell slots. Okay. Uh, yeah. Caca, caca. I mean. Yeah, it's uh, this one is not gonna. Like that. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, I don't think I have anything that communicates either. Mm, Dancing lights only creates four light sources, so you can't like use them to spell out words or anything. No, but you could put a flashing light over light. Oh, <laughs> uh, we could just speak Come with, uh... here. <laughs> oh, we see lights. This is the person. Yeah, if you see a light do this, that means come here. <laughs> Make it into the shape of an exclamation point and throw it out over the suspect? Yes. A blinking arrow, like, doo, doo, this <laughs> way. <laughs> I can instantly make a flower blossom or a seed pod open. So I could just give you a flower and I could be like, pay attention. I made the flower bloom. I the mean, flower could you do opens, that to each of us? something's happening <laughs> uh i mean it's it's druid craft i was like okay what does that even do i think you have I can to predict the weather you know <laughs> i can make sure a smell something happens y'all will know <laughs> I told you, we should have a timer for when liz starts the fight right oh. <laughs> don't start the fight i mean i could you know, just because I was do, like, chased by dogs and, well, okay, I jumped on the lizard guy, but I was just trying to get him to talk. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was a little... Direct. I mean... Direct. Direct, yeah, direct is a good I one. didn't kill anybody. <laughs> no, you did, you did not. I mean, that's true. Like, okay, all of these except... are either just not a good idea or, like, an ocean violation. Like produce flame. <laughs> you could totally use produce flame for this. Is it gonna be safe? No. <laughs> Not for anyone involved. Po poison spray. I guess it could kind of use it for this. Sure, Kira, you don't have the you don't have the message cantrip, do you? No. Okay. I was trying to look at I have no idea. What does dancing lights do? That's the one that creates four lights that you can put somewhere. A great, I think that's a great signal. It is, yeah, because because it, but at least no one will know that you did it, so you can't get in trouble for you know disrupting because they don't know you did it. Fair, oh, I'm wait, sure. um, Shakira also has minor illusion. Oh, minor illusion. Oh, Ooh, that's what I get one. to do with that. Make minor illusions. <laughs> um, yeah, you I could either one. Create a sound or an image of an object within range that lasts for the duration, so up to 30 feet away. Ooh. An uh, image of an object, like a chair or footprints or a small chest, anything that would fit within a five-foot cube. Flashing arrow above the suspect? Yeah. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. You could totally do that. Kill this that guy. <laughs> <laughs> or just throw up the words, help. Oh, that works, too. Thief. I think what it'll be fun to do um, um, just a red exclamation point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. I have it'll light. be like Looney Tunes. I have the light cantrip, so if I see anything, I can signal. I will signal with a blue light, a bright blue light, on something that I can try and get high up, so people so you can see it. I can make smells, so I want to say if you smell a summer breeze and we're in freaking winter, you'll know it's that's not normal. <laughs> that works. And don't forget your thaumaturgy will let you boom your voice up to three times as loud. I have thaumaturgy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm not, trust me, I'm not forgetting that. I was just thinking no. if so I wanted could, yeah, a, little bit, a little bit less, a little bit less direct. conspicuous than, hey, 
<laughs> well, so we know. So thaumaturgy lets you does that let, lets you turn on and off candles. You can see, right? Uh oh, you're right. It does do that. So druidcraft does that too. So if we have candles, okay. we could light them and put them out to get each well, other's attention. They'll probably attention. have gas lights around the front of the stage. I can also I can also change them color. Ooh. Ooh okay. So if we want to just set like a color that means like danger or I see something. If we have a color code, I can I can either do it with flames or using light. I can do it. Yeah, I can do it with Ooh. light or with thaumaturgy on flames. Cool. I don't think mine's that cool. It says, where did it go? Cause flames to flicker, brighten, dim, or change color for one minute. I vote green is come here, red is run away. Okay. What's our what's our fight color? Because we gotta have a fight color too. Oh, you should at least wow. have a fight song. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could just start singing the fight song and then just. Is that how, how they know music. in action movies? That's how they what know if, that just the music starts playing and I, they just start beating each other up. Music? <laughs> what if we did like red, yellow, green? Like green means I I see something or come here. Yellow means look out or be aware there's danger, and red would mean like choose Attack. violence. Choose violence. I like it. Red, red for choose red violence. Red is choose violence. Choose yep. violence. <laughs> Get ready, or I see something interesting. Look out. <laughs> choose well, violence. I'll just try to. I can't change I'm not colors, going so to choose violence. I, well, I can. Not we're not choosing yeah, violence. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we can just turn the lights on and off repeatedly. I'll just be like clapping on and off. Like, like come on, look, look, look. There you go. I'm going to be so delicate and, and gentle. You guys are just not going to know what to do. You'll see. Well, if you got like, if somebody could communicate to me, I see something or something's wrong, I could use one of the two i could use that to signal the rest of the group right so maybe i could be somewhere like in the middle like maybe the back middle of the theater where i can kind of see everybody or or i can kind of see if if somebody's trying to get my attention um, could, or, um... Yeah. okay so I just pulled this up to help with the planning. Um, and it's a little bit of a quick asking around town. will tell you a couple of quick things that are common knowledge about this particular theater. So let me do that so I can actually see what I'm doing and I can actually throw a couple of quick notes on here. So this is your front entrance. It's over there. These are exit only. Theoretically. Theoretically, these are the two stage doors. And this door here is locked and set with just is never unlocked. No one's really sure what's behind that door. Just no one ever uses it. But actors have been known to arrive from either of the two stage doors. Okay. Just okay. as a little Good bit like a, hey. Just so you know. Okay. Get those off the board because we don't need them. So if I can so, try and sit like in the back middle where I can see most of the room, um, I can look for anything suspicious or familiar. And if any of you see something, you can try to let me know and I can, I can throw up a signal. Yeah, I can right. just pop, well, when, we can pop our dancing lights start... in your face. There you go. <laughs> go ahead, Liz. When the actors start arriving, I'm just going to try to go in this bottom door. Just kind of, I'll have my instrument, you know, case clearly visible and just kind of see if I can just follow some people in, kind of merge in with the crowd. Just make make like you're part of this the scene. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You belong there. You're a performer. Is she though? I is am. he? I am. I have that proficiency. I mean, uh, there, there you go. It's checked off. It is. It says it right there. Trained. <laughs> Trained. See, it says right there. Performance plus five. Woo. 
Oh, wow. Ooh. Yeah, she's pretty good. Um, let's see. Oh, there's what I was looking for. Um, Bard Rogue. Yes. What's, you have a, what instrument do you have again? <laughs> what the hell did you give me? The, the friggin' uh, something pipe? The Ulean pipes. Pan pipe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like it's like compact bagpipes. Right, right. Oh, okay. Right. Like, Which would not have been my choice, but I'm going to roll with it. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, it's I a wish little... I knew this was a plan because I have a flute too. We could just, we're just a band. Bro. <laughs> well, you, you still could. Are you tagging yeah, along with the flute? It. We yeah, let's do that. I, yeah. I'm trained with my flute. It's actually not a terrible combo because the Ulean pipes are like reedy and the flute is more pure. They're both relatively a high register. It'd be, it'd be easier if you had like a tuba. Mm, yeah you know something to kind of pull it down a step but Although i don't feel that we i think spreading out is a better plan well you could there's two doors so we could if you wanted Ooh. to both be performers you what you could go through each door or mm -hmm. both doors I mean, what better way to look way. at the crowd than to be on the stage it's i mean genius. that's fair <laughs> that's a good point Okay. Not just observe the crowd because we're looking for a thief. We're looking for a thief. That's why. Yeah. I just I just want to mill around backstage and talk to people and just be backstage in case that thief comes running through the back. And I'm I'll kind of trying to watch the back doors by being I'll try backstage. and keep an eye. Okay. I'll try and keep an eye on the like the most of the auditorium. So okay, so Arwen's plan is when she gets there, or sorry, Chrysanthemum's plan when she gets there is to go in and grab a seat in the back center. Yeah, just kind of as blend close in to with that the crowd. Yeah, right, Lorelai's plan is to get early there and mill backstage, just so Rob can mentally prep what's going to happen. Is Lorelai's plan actually going out and sitting in the pit, or is she planning to just? Oh no, 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 no! I'm just gonna no, no. <clears throat> okay, and you're bringing Nala along. When you go, it no, because I think we should be separate. Okay. Okay. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to two, have two Nala, strangers like, together sniff around be... to see if she can pick up any scents before we. Oh, like she, like, if, before she, if she's starts, there early. See if yeah, she and a cat early doesn't early. count as a person, so yeah, we could do that. And then if there's nothing, you can just go in the opposite door from. Lorelai. Oh yeah, honestly. With that. I didn't even. If, yeah. Can if I, you went as cat form, you could be all over this theater, and nobody would really notice. I don't think. Well, that's the thing, except for the thief, because um, there was a catch. I don't know if she got like a good look at the cat that was behind her. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe yeah. it's fine. Different colored cat. I was there's like, can I do all, that? Can I choose? <laughs> choose a different once, kind of cat. Once the light goes down, who's going to even see a cat? I think black cat. Amazing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay, fair. And then, okay, so Nala's going in as a cat to look around. Lorelai's going in early and plans to just mill throughout the beginning of the performance. Yep. Chrysanthemum is going to go in and grab a seat. Yep. And try not to and get start. distracted by the drama on stage. <laughs> yes. And what's exactly. Shakira doing besides looking for bacon? <laughs> well, she's absolutely doing that, but um, I think uh, Sharkir is going to attempt to blend in with the crowd as well when it starts, um, and maybe position herself if there's a seat there, or even just standing against the wall if that's allowed um, on the southern side, like right in the middle, on the southern side of the theater. Okay. So not yeah. Near one just of the to, main just entrances. So I can kinda... All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> we'll pick up with Lorelai first. Lorelai arrives is going to arrive. Um. A few hours before the show starts, I assume. Give yourself some time. Um, there is a, a doorman operating who's, who's there at the door to greet you. And um, it's uh, kind of a big guy. Definitely the bouncer type. Yeah. Um, but he's done up. He's got, you know, a high, high collared shirt and a full cravat. And you can see like the little bit of the, 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 the stretching along the sleeves of his jacket where it's like it's not really fit for him but it's it's got that nice heavy fur plush leather it's like it looks really sharp he's just a little too big in it <laughs> okay so the fancy bouncer and he's it. yeah he kind of glances at you don't know you 
oh no i i know i'm i'm here to be a a, a backup and i am new in town huh so i'll i'll only go on if, if they need me uh-huh he kind of pulls out a thick notebook from behind his back and turns it uh name Lorelai. um part musician musician uh, I, I, are you at the right theater? Well, I, I hope so. We, we have we have a cellist, two violinists down. I don't have anybody else. Oh well, no, but that that's because I'm here as a backup. Ah. Uh. So I'm really just emergency help. So I you... probably won't even get any playing time. But you know, when you're at my stage, you just take what you can get, and if all I do is stand by and don't actually get to play. That's how you pay your dues in this business. Okay, that's a convincing line. <laughs> uh, roll me a persuasion. I... And he thumbs over his shoulder, and with a 19, you go on and hey, love it. All right. Hey, monkey. Miss Liz says, hey, monkey. She says hi. She's so cute. She fun. She fun. Okay. So he lets you in. And you quickly discover that you can find your way around. to dump And dump And dump. I'll clear those off the board for you. Oh. Uh, the first room as you come in is I believe like a coat room storeroom. He said triple checking the map. Oh, he actually ushers you through. You find yourself in them um, an office that first room. Oh, uh oh. Um, <laughs> it, you are not alone. Okay. Uh, a very frazzled woman is sitting there shuffling through papers, and it looks like a couple of different sets of bindings of stacks of papers that are wound together. Um, and she's got like scattered lead pencils everywhere she could find. There's a moment, she looks up, looks at you for a moment and goes to write something down and goes to the wrong ear for her pencil. And it, it's no work to get past her if you want to. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go past her. Okay. Yep. Hey, Belladonna, glad to have you here. Um, Let's see, seven, that takes you into um, that room in the corner is full of couches and uh, actually one beanbag chair, <laughs> because why not? Um, sure. The walls are covered in a light green paint and is currently unoccupied. And uh, monochrome, awesome. And then when you look down that long hallway, you can see that hallway extends all the way down to the far side and you can see the other entrance at the far end of it. Um, and your best guess is each of those doors is a dressing room. All right, nice. Um, I'm gonna, oh, I bet they don't have a dressing room. I was gonna kind of walk down the hall and like look and listen for musicians. Okay. You do not hear any music. As you go down, you don't pick up any musical notes of any kind at this point. Mm -hmm. um, as you're there, you see more people are starting to come in. Uh, you see a couple of the actors come up and they head into a dressing room or two. Um, the one at the far entrance uh, has a, a painted gold star on it. Mm -hmm. A very, very tall, very slender man with very refined features. Uh, comes up the door. He glances halfway down the hall at you, and like there's almost a bit of a scoff before he turns and looks <laughs> at his his room his door. And then he he actually snaps his fingers, and the star on the door begins to like have a, a rotating pattern of lights on it. Ooh. And then he he straightens up his cravat and goes into the room and <laughs> slam. Fancy. Very fancy. Um, mm. one of the, okay. uh, one of the other women that was, 
But don't be minding him. He just thinks because he happens to be the lead, he can act however posh and asshole he wants to. Well, honey, isn't that the way they always are? Oh, well, the gentleman playing his brother now, he's a right sweet fella. Really? Don't get attached to him. He's mine. I will cut you. And then she goes into a dressing room. <laughs> All right. Huh. Well, I can't really linger here. Is there? <sighs> Sorry, Ari. I guess I'm just going to go Hi. to go to the loungy area and sit if I can somewhere where I can see the length of this hall and just sort of wait for the musicians to arrive. Okay. And That's... kind of be able to see the doors in case of, you know, sneak thieves running through. That's reasonable. You can, um, you can definitely do that. Um, at what time ish is, um, Nala planning to slip in as a cat? Probably an hour before showtime. Okay. I can only be a cat for two hours without, you know, re-upping being a cat. So an hour beforehand to explore around and see if I smell her then and if I don't find her. Because, I mean, why would she be there early, really? But I don't know. I'm not a criminal. I can't think like one. <laughs> Except that she ran in ahead of us, theoretically, right? I mean, kind of. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, that's for that. That's that. Okay, so that's where that's at. He said, trying to remember, if, making sure he has the map fully memorized for anything weird that should happen. Oh, nothing weird will happen. Nothing weird ever happens. So Nala is going to slip in in cat form. Mm -hmm. It is not terribly hard on one or two tries. Well, Okay. Let's let's have some fun. Uh -oh. All right. Uh oh. Which oh. entrance? Which, which entrance is Nala trying to slip through? Um, about an hour before show now, so it's time for the cat to make their make her entrance. Probably front door. The main entrance. Yeah, if if it's propped open or if someone's come in, it'll just. Go right in with their Ain't feet. Ain't nothing propped open. It's winter. It's winter? Okay. They want to try to contain as much heat as they can. Although you could rush in behind somebody. That's what I was thinking to do. Just rush in behind somebody. Um, What is a cat's dex bonus? Uh, plus two. Plus two. Roll me a... Yeah, get, roll a d20 and let's see what happens when we add a six to it. Which is kind of hilarious because if you've ever had a cat that wants to go outside. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I totally get that. There is no, there is there is no, no stopping yeah. that cat. There is no stopping them. <laughs> there Especially is if you're going in and out. If you're fast. If you see it coming. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's not hard. You bolt right in between uh, one of the early arrivals' legs and have a chance to explore the is wherever you want to explore. So I'm going to um, go ahead and see if I can sniff her out because um, I probably got a smell of her. I mean, it was last night, so when I get advantage on uh, wisdom, what does it say? Advantage on wisdom perception checks that rely on smell. Okay. So we got uh, a plus three. Yeah, you can make a perception check to see. Uh, yeah, if I smell her and then just, I guess, wander around sniffing. Okay. Um, on the board, I popped open the, uh, okay, we can work with that. That you can see that hallway that goes out to the one of yeah. the main entrances into the theater itself. And so you can kind of explore as you go. I'll probably try to just, you know, hang along a wall as cats do. Mm -hmm. Quite reasonable. No, no question of that uh, on my end. 
Um, let's see here. I am going to also disable this bit of fog, uh, pink, as that will also be something that would have been spotted by the party by now. As you can, you can see how that goes. Okay. Thank you. I was randomly delivered more Pepsi. Hi. I said thank you. Amazon uh, Prime is amazing these days. <laughs> <laughs> right to your computer. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure if I would find that like really awesome or like freaky levels of creepy. It would depend what I'm right in the middle of doing. Sometimes it's just like, thank you. <laughs> no, no questions asked, but. There's a Serenade Live skit I'd be like, mm. in this somewhere now. I'm imagining two people being very amorous and one goes, do you have? No, hang on. Let me check my Amazon Prime. Yeah, it can be here in 10 minutes. There you you shake your head because it would, they, they wouldn't, they, cause. Um, anyway. Better than just a minute, <clears throat> run to the store. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Um, a little bit before I'm going to guess, uh, that Chrysanthemum and Shakira make their grand entrance, uh, Lorelai will spot, um, a trio, mm, nope, a duo, coming in through the door she came in. It's two gentlemen, um, dressed relatively nicely, uh, black doublets, uh, gray shirts with a gray cravat, um, and they both have like a violin case under their arms. And they actually don't even notice you at first. They go, they're going to walk. If you don't say anything, they're going to walk right past you, turn and head up, and then take that door out onto the stage. If you have no comment for them. No, I, I think I'll just let them go. If, if, they're, if everyone's just going to let me sit here, I'm just going to sit here. I don't, I don't need to stir the pot. See how good I'm being? You're just biding your time. That's all that's happening. The pot's going to boil over any second now, and you just want to be <laughs> positioned for it. That's what's really going on. About an hour before the show, Chrysanthemum and Shakira are going to arrive. Um, we will assume together, for the sake of argument, and to keep my life easy, um, as you approach the front, the facade of the theater is brightly lit uh it doesn't take any arcane effort to identify that there are multiple continual light spells cast up declaring this the brisen bright theater as you enter into the lobby you immediately catch eye of a of the bright blue form of a ghost hovering in the center of it Nodding and bowing to everyone that comes. Interesting. It's welcome, welcome to the Brison Bolt Theater. Malcolm Brison Bolt at your service. Please, sir, do not forget to remove your hat. There are ladies present, if you would. Thank you, sir. Madam, a pleasure to see you again. It has been far, far too long. I think I may have even been alive the last time you were finally here. <laughs> sir, I'm serious. Take your hat off. Oh, and you too. And he's like, he just continues as people are coming in. Chrysanthemum's like momentarily distracted just by this and all of the, all of the comments he's making, but I'll eventually continue through. He says, oh yes, you, you, you do have a companion with you. This, this show is not for children. Don't you know? Blood and drama and jealousy and oh my God, my madam, I am so sorry. It's been some time since one of the fair folk of the Shire have come into the theater. I, that was terrible of my part. Please, please. You, I, I insist you stop at the ticket booth and receive a half off to ticket for the next performance we run. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Chrysanthemum Coriolis, it's a pleasure to meet you. Malcolm Brisenbolt. Brisenbright. Are you the proprietor of the establishment? I was until a certain unfortunate event 
caused me to have to pass ownership on to others. Well, it's awesome that you get to hang around. Well, awesome is a perspective I suppose one might take. There is a part of me, a wee bit of part of me, that is ready to move on, but then the rest of me can never leave the theater behind. I look around and I'm like, well, I can't blame you. This place is incredible. I've never been to the theater before. I'm so excited. Oh, you are in for quite a show. Jealousy, <coughs> love, murder most foul. Sounds like the best kind of evening. Which does beg the question, does it not? Is there murder that is less foul? That's an interesting question. On a question we will answer tonight. I recommend as close to the stage as you can, but not in the first two rows. Why not the first two rows? It's the splash zone. Ah, Remember, thanks for the heads murder up. Murder most foul in tonight's performance. Thanks for the heads up. Wow. Great. Ooh, I am so pumped. <laughs> Didn't know we were coming to see Evil Dead the musical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's it's better than that. Oh, boy. I, uh, I, um, I will, I will, hmm. I, wait till I get to the synopsis, Spinny, because okay. <laughs> you're going to recognize it. And I don't think we should say anything else in this company because, yeah. I'll, I'll, it'll make sense in about nine months. Anyway, um, where do you go once you've come in, the two of you? Um, well, I'm I'm going to just like, I'm trying to look as natural as possible but I'm very excited. So I'm just kind of like, like I'm trying to take it all in, but I'm looking also to see if there's anything suspicious, anything, anybody that looks familiar on like on my way in towards the main auditorium. At this point, it's pretty much just a crowd of people coming in to settle in to watch the show. Okay. Um, then I'm going to go, I'm going to go straight in to make sure I can get a seat where I want one. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to whisper to, I'm going to like tug on Sharkira's arm and say, maybe take a quick look around and see if anything looks out of place. Got I'm going to go, I'm going to go find a, find a good seat. Oh. And I am going to sit in the back, um, but I'm going to um, like, like climb up on the chair and sit perch myself like on the back of the seat so i can so i'm in the back like so i can see though not one person gives the halfling a hard time for wine to be able to see over everyone from the back row there is a little bit of a like one woman coming in who looks very proper and probably is kind of is probably has a little more money than she needs to for this show does make them you know there are seats down in the front my friend I'm, you know, I, I have a little bit of anxiety. I might need to make a quick exit and I don't want to disturb oh, anybody. Yes, yes. My sister has but, that. But thank you. Oh, it's, it's rough. It's rough. But I it thank is. you for your consideration. It is. I can recommend an apothecary. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Wonderful gentleman. Makes a great salt for it. You'll be asleep for oh. three days straight. Oh, that sounds awesome. What's his name? Eh, she rattles off some name from somebody that you All probably right. can't afford. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm just making a conversation. Excellent. I'll definitely go to that place that you just said. <laughs> she likes talking to people. It doesn't take much. Yeah. Rob makes note, do not engage every NPC in role play with <laughs> Arwin or nothing will happen tonight. Well, it also helps like it also helps if somebody can, you know, if you get into a sticky situation, someone can say, Oh yeah, I remember her. No, she was lovely. She was so friendly. You know, it's I totally it's, talked it's part to her, of yeah. it's part of an alibi, you know. Oh, that halfling couldn't co possibly have caused any trouble. She was so polite. Okay. I'm going to, like, hop across and just run across the back chairs just to be like, hey, I'm here, too, and then run back to the other side. I'm going to wave. I'm a cat, <laughs> but I'm, I'm in this room I'm as gonna well. I'm going to wave at the cat very excitedly. <laughs> I'm a cat. <laughs> okay. Um, Hi, kitty. As you have a chance to explore a little bit further, <laughs> these two rooms here and here are where the tickets are being sold through the doorway. It's one of those half splitting doors mm -hmm. uh, so they can, you know, 
pay for all, you know, get your tickets and anything you need to buy in addition there. Um, and that you would have been in here briefly last night to get your ticket. Um, and then Sharkira is going to set up, you said, to the south? Mm -hmm. So Shump. on the map kind of below, like, yeah. Right One of those there. two spots? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get you out of the stairwell, though. Because <laughs> that's not going to fly with you. So we'll get you in an actual seat. Okay, so everyone's kind of positioned around. Uh, three musicians have taken up their places in the front center in front of the stage, a cellist and two violinists. And they're starting to tune up. And at this point, Laurel, I will hear the, the sounds going up. Um, how much do I need to mess with you tonight? Um, as Laurel is sitting there in the back, uh, the, the one who previously threatened you comes down. And, and kind of takes a minute to sit and kind of like kind of stretch a little bit in the, in the green room and starts running through her vocal techniques and prepping to go out uh, in the early parts of the show. And there's a moment where she looks at your direction. She starts to say something. She goes back to prepping. And then she looks at Lorelai. And then she preps again. And she says, shouldn't you be with the musicians? Should we tell her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh no, I I'm not at their level. I'm just here to listen and learn. Not like you. You sound amazing. How oh. long have you been in the theater? Only a few years. Uh, so, why, wouldn't you hear better from on stage? Well, I don't want oh, to. I, mean, I don't want to into the theater proper. I mean, wouldn't you hear better, like, sitting with the audience? Oh, well, I, you know, I wouldn't want to take a seat, then Then that would be... You're here for him, aren't you? For him? No, of course not. You Cheryl, didn't even notice someone like me. Cheryl told me there would be somebody that he's been messing around with. You're her, aren't you? Of course not. Uh, I'm only interested in performance as you wish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it's a half dozen. Okay. I love it when rogues invest in, you know, social skills. <laughs> Better than the sneak skill. To tell you the truth, it's the cellist, really. <laughs> That's where he's going and why he's always... He, he's picked up three new tunes. He sings backstage, and they're all in low registers. I knew it. Well, Could you go on for her? What? Could you play for her? If something were to happen to her, could you fill in for her? I can't sabotage the show. I could. I could. You could? Excellent. I could. Stay here. Absolutely. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then murder happened. <laughs> She's gone a few minutes. And then she comes back out on the stage with a, a woman in tow who's holding a, she's got her bow in her hands, but she, uh, she's, she came in the far side and went down and around the other. And she's, you know, long black dress. Uh, she's wearing a very similar doublet and, uh, everything else is the gentleman from before. It's a, she doesn't have a cravat. It's kind of a, a low cut bodice. Um, and she looks very confused as, as the actress leads her backstage with you. What is she doing? The actress glances at, at the, the woman and she looks, she goes, what? I just wanted to introduce you to this. This is Shardalana. She's the cellist in the, in the, uh, in the pit. And you, you are, I never I'm caught Lorelei. your name. Lorelai. 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 
Exactly. And Lorelai, and you're the one that say you too can play the cello, right, Lorelai? Indeed, I can. So, I love the cello. So I respect your Shardalana work so much. is completely unnecessary, isn't she? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that at this point. Well, you can fill in for her, can't you? And at this point, the Shardalana is like, wait, what? No, and looks no, com not a, completely floored not, by this conversation. No, 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 not, not, not right this moment. Look what I'm wearing. No one will notice. The lights will be low. And after all, there's no reason that this whore should be allowed to perform. And then Shard's eyes pop wide. Oh, snap. And, sh and you see a little trickle of blood. And she goes down in front of you. Was not expecting that. Now, oh. hide the body and get out there. <laughs> and then she what? turns and heads for a dressing room. What? Oh, no. Murder and hide the body. Oh, my God. I'm gonna dr I can't hide the body. I have to go <laughs> past the doorman. Okay, I'm going to cram the body under the couch. <laughs> There is a door you haven't explored oh. yet. I know you and oh. doors where you haven't explored yet. Me and doors. Okay, you're right. There is that room. Okay, <laughs> that's what I need to do. I'm going to do it. Oh, where's my map? Okay. Yeah, like, seriously. I agreed. <laughs> okay, this. so I can get... Yeah, there's a door. Okay, I'm going to go look at this door. Is this door trapped? Uh, no. Or locked? No, it's mm -hmm. push it open. Oh my gosh, let's just push it open. Okay. And it's, this is not the one where nobody goes? Uh, nobody's been in there yet. It's a prop room. Didn't you say... Oh, that's this room up here. Never mind. Tell you, you what. did say okay, it was a door room. that was Great. locked that nobody ever opens. Yes. <gasps> you could, If you could open that door, you could totally put it in there since nobody goes there yeah, anyway. That's a long drag. That's The, the locked door <laughs> would be oh. this door down over here where I just tried to draw a lock and I failed. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to I drag this body in the prop room and try to hide it under some stuff. See, you're not even going to like try to like make her not die. Do you, are you proficient well, in, in is, medicine? Is it or a anything? body or is it is she alive? It's a body. Exactly. She's just instantly murdered her. Just just yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh <laughs> Oh boy. Okay. Um, we have and I was afraid bathroom. tonight was going to go too smoothly for you guys. <laughs> there's a body in the prop room. Uh, yeah, there's a dead body in the prop room. I mean, there's okay, probably lots go, of those. Can but... I... <laughs> right, can I exactly. It's, it's not, it's not the first, right? Yeah. <laughs> Won't be the last. Right. Clearly, <laughs> you guys have never, like, participated in theater. <laughs> okay, now like, I gotta go spot on up, accuracy. Is there blood on the floor? Uh, Yeah. Okay, I, I need to clean up the blood on the floor. No, wait, is there like a rug in the prop room? Uh, yes. Okay, I'm going to put the rug from the prop room over the blood. On good, the floor. Move. good move, good yeah. move. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now, that will never news. come and bite us your, in the butt, ever. Your, your friend. Yeah. Your friend uh, is, uh, is directing traffic away from the green room. Okay, oh, very great. nice. In fact, you hear her like, no, 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 no. We need to stay in our dressing rooms. There's a, a new cellist tonight. She's very stressed. She threw up. We do not <laughs> We do not go in the green room tonight. It's, oh my gosh, you, the, I don't know what she ate, but if you smell it, you're going to go too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, so and, so what, is, what is this rogue's alignment? Just curious. <laughs> Like, is this totally like, hey, it's just a murder. I'm totally going to help with this murder. Well, if I if I do anything else, I'm going to be accused of the murder. I, I can't, <laughs> she's known here. I'm not supposed to be here. Who do they think killed this person? I mean, that's, I, fair. that's very fair. Yeah. I mean, I, she, I, she, oh. pro she threatened you randomly for just being there. I'm assuming she threatens basically everyone all the time well you know what um i'm not gonna trust to that i let's see where can i go from this prop room if these are doors uh -huh. okay i'm gonna take the door that goes into the theater okay 
and see if I can just sort of like, is there, are people still milling around? This is no, show, they're right? starting to take their seats and you'll know, you've noticed that the lights in general in the theater are starting to slow fade. Okay. I'm going to try to like sneak into a seat in the theater. <laughs> so you're, you're not filling in for the cellist. Oh, hell no. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no. I have disappeared. I am no longer that person. <laughs> I am not that person. I am not that person. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, okay. If I could completely change my clothing, I would. Prop room. Prop room. You totally could. Pat? Oh, prop room. Mm -hmm. No, they'll know the props. But, like, my hat is going in my bed. The hat, the hat is gone. The, like, yeah, the, uh, it's different as I can look. I'm going to just get in a seat somewhere, like, back here by an exit in case I need to run for it. <laughs> <laughs> you have successfully evacuated me from the back of the theater. I had no plan. Was, I wanted to, just wanted to see what you would do with that. That was highly unexpected. I try. <laughs> I think right. this is uh, who has to speak with dead? <laughs> <laughs> that woman's crazy. <laughs> Theater. Mm. Uh <laughs> that's a fair point. You'd be surprised what you can chalk up to theater curses. That's that is an incredibly fair point. I dabbled a little bit at the, in theater in college, and every every place, everywhere was haunted. There were ghosts or curses <laughs> everywhere in the building. I'm like, yeah, okay, it's kind of part of the aesthetic. It is. It is part of what happens. <sighs> the as you have a chance to take in the the theater proper, um, it does feature a large chandelier that is lit with continual light spells that eventually then start to um, fade and, and the theater eventually goes dark. Um, there are little candles up on the stands by the, the two violinists. Uh, there's a cello laying on the ground next to a third unoccupied chair. And you can see as the two violinists are kind of like, what, what do we do? What do we do? And then they kind of, one, one shrugs the other and he starts, um, he starts to play and the other starts to play and they start kind of working their way through the overture um, and the lights come up and the, the curtain opens and you're immediately greeted by uh, by tall na tall and haunty as he begins his opening soliloquy about his quest for love and the story that you are to see is is one where he will find it have it wretched from him unjustly and then have it destroyed before his eyes in a selfish, selfish act. But fear not, for he will rise again to bring vengeance upon those who have brought him such pain and suffering. And the show kind of starts, starts up from there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to need to know what everyone's plan is once the show is up and in full swing as the count is courting the uh, a young woman on stage the the crazy one with the knife yeah her oh right. <clears throat> she she's so, the beloved of the count lucky guy um so my plan my plan is just to try not to get distracted by the show um but my plan is basically to just keep scanning Look for anything familiar, anyone who looks familiar. Look for anything that looks like it might be out of place. Um, and also keep an eye out for my friends. You did see Lorelai come in looking absolutely panicked and without her hat. <laughs> is she, did she go on stage? Yeah. Or is she, or she's where the musician, like where the performers are? No, no she, I bolted. Yeah, she snuck in and has a seat over. Uh, she's actually down your row. Oh, 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 oh! I wasn't looking at the map. I probably should have been looking at the map. Um, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna like start to wave and then be like, "Oh shoot, I'm not supposed to know her." And then I'm gonna try. <laughs> I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try like very hard not to like 
keep looking in her direction. I'm like, nope, I don't see anybody here I know. <laughs> but but no, keeping like keeping an eye out for anything. Um, waiting to see if anything happens that seems like it's out of the ordinary. That's reasonable. Um, I let's see what exactly uh, Nala is trying to sniff something familiar. Yes, if I remember correctly. Uh, is Sharkira doing anything of particular interest as you're preparing for this? No, oh, she's just kind of, kind of more of the same, just keeping an eye on things, scanning the room, looking at anybody that looks kind of anxious or antsy or anything of the sort. Anything sus. Okay. Dark At least we know everyone's here. task is to watch the play, so... <laughs> we know if they're doing it or not. Uh, okay. Uh, I would love for everyone to give me a perception check. Yeah. I'll put this up so everyone can see everybody's roles for this. How All the excitement and drama truly happens in the green room. Well, clearly that is the case tonight. <laughs> All the They're excitement so good. did happen in the green room. Ooh. Is that a natural 20? Yes. Yeah, I got one. Yeah. Woo. I got a two. A natural oh. 20, a 19. Lore, you know what? I think Lorelai can be forgiven for not picking up on too many cues tonight. A uh, little bit of stress happened there. Um, <laughs> and uh, and some coming excitement. At the same time, uh -huh. Chrysanthemum clearly is just a little too wrapped up in the story. That, that checks out. That was that was definitely something that was like, okay, okay, that's a thing. That's cool. That's a thing. Oh, 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 dance. <laughs> Bobby. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay focused, but man, it's, it's just so interesting. <laughs> Bo the Bobby has, so has redeemed the re-roll, and he really Ooh. wants to see if Chrysanthemum or see if uh, Chrysanthemum <laughs> can do a little better. Okay. I will try for Bobby. For Bobby. He's a perception, right? Is that, is that our favorite Bobby? Dance Panther Bobby, okay. Yes, it's it's this one. It's that Bobby. <laughs> Damn it, Bobby. That's a little bit better. Okay. Okay, so everyone everyone did okay-ish. That's we can we can handle that. Um, the show continues uh, as you as you uh, watch. Um, where's my where's my little plot summary here? Um, within the first several scenes. Uh, the Count is clearly in love with Crazy Lady, who is not nearly as crazy on stage as she is off. Um, and then is introduced a very handsome, fair-haired man, equally built, broad-shouldered, um, as as tall and slender and just regal as the lead is. The gentleman who comes with that, that plays opposite him is... Equally as handsome, but more approachable. As well, now I'm very interested. As as <laughs> as reserved and noble as the brother is, the younger brother is kind and gregarious, and it's it's not hard to see why someone would literally kill for him. Of course, how much of that is the actor, and how much of that is the character? It can be hard to tell sometimes. Um. And they become betrothed. There's a, a big to do about this. Um, and every time they share the scene, the tall, haunt, haunt, haunty one comes out and addresses the audience of this horrible injustice playing out before you. Uh, yeah, that's fair. Um, that to be, do not be beguiled by her, her ways. She is a, oh, she's, She's untrue, and she doesn't respect those that provide. And he speaks terribly of the brother, and it's it's quite the storyline. I think I figured it out. Okay. I think I figured it out a little bit ago. Okay. I I've read this, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Seriously, this is the play they're seeing. Um, and I didn't know uh, one was written. <laughs> Yeah. But I guess it makes sense. It does. 
prop, props to props for Watsy for their self-referential humor. Um, anyway, about the about the the moment of the of the coming wedding. So now, crazy ladies out there with a couple of of actresses doing uh, the pre-wedding prep. Uh, Nala will get the scent that she recognizes from the night before, and a woman will limp in and take a seat. That's right. She has a little bit of a limp to her walk. She seems mostly smooth on her feet, but she takes a seat there. Um, comes in and kind of slides in next. I know. To her. I know which one she is. Uh, yeah, you'll recognize. You you can track her down pretty easily with that role. Okay. And she seems, you know, kind of settles in and takes a moment to look over her little playbill and tries to get involved in watching the, the show. Um, let's see. With all of our roles, Shark here will also have picked up on the fact that this person has who came in late has that telltale limp from the discussion of, of the arrow having wounded her in the leg the night before. But with your Pretty current, fast, even with that arrow in her leg. Yeah. With your current roles, you're the only two that technically would know anything unless you have a way of communicating it with each other that you want to kick in. I'm actually just going to see if I can run over and brush by them. Like, so it's like, I'm going to just come get your attention and then I'm going to go over to where she is. So sweep through and then go perch. Cat like. Yeah. I maybe I maybe noticed her come in late, but didn't notice didn't recognize her I'd and then like, if that oh doesn't gosh, work i'll go so turn back into a person and do sparkly lights <laughs> i know we were supposed to do this but i'm trying not to break a uh, character <laughs> just just go up to her and start meowing ask for treats meow meow <laughs> i know you got that bacon okay i can smell the bacon <laughs> i can smell the bacon on you <laughs> when, when a cat asks for bacon you give the cat bacon Yes. That's just all there is to that. Yeah, if I come down yes. one morning and get my coffee and the cat goes, dude, is there bacon this morning? It's like, okay, yeah, we're giving there you will bacon. There will be. Yeah, I we can make that happen. Make bacon. I don't know what's going on anymore when I drank last night, but you get bacon. <laughs> all right. So do we get, are we able to watch the cat? What should I, what should I roll for that? Oh, you don't need to roll. I mean, you're a cat. You yeah. Can, you can definitely get everyone's attention in turn. And, and get over there. Um, as you do, there's um, on stage, the wedding is starting in full force. The, the violinists are desperately trying to create as much sound as they can with as much authority as they can without a tenor based tone to their pairing. Um, there's even a, a misstep early on in the, the song that leads into this where one of them tries to play the cello part and it wow. does not work. Oh. Um, and, and you can see they're desperate. You know, they're, they're, they're professionals. They're making it work, but you can see that, that sideways glance where they're not quite sure what they're doing, but they are, they're all in on it. They're doing their best. Um, Add props because I don't know if I could do that. Yep, and uh, and as as they they work into the crescendo, the uh, the tall haughty character appears at the back of the stage and comes forward, and you just watch as a blade comes down right into the back of of the brother, and his chest explodes out in a spray of blood onto the audience. Uh, we lost Liz. Dude. We'll give Liz a moment. Because <laughs> this is important. Well, you know, Liz is busy watching the show. She might not notice this. Check the green room. She is not going back to the green room. She is <laughs> so again. worried not with my role, but I, the thing that I smelled was the dead body. <laughs> I was like, oh no, am I going to go back there? <laughs> Something smells wrong. I will investigate it. Something smells familiar, like the dead bodies from last night. <laughs> oh, no. I smell something familiar. It's death. It's death. It's, it's decaying human flesh, unfortunately. Not again. Mostly, mostly, I just wanted to see how Lorelai was going to handle the, uh, ha handle the, here's a dead body, do something with it. 
I was just desperately curious to see how that played out. <sighs> yeah. And she dealt with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, now he knows who to call to hide the body. It's great. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll <laughs> say something to the City Watch later. I hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We, we um, can't we can't have that much uh, like that's too much tying it to us. We can't say anything. She need to leave. We'll find yeah, it. Yeah. We'll yeah, find we it do. before tomorrow night's uh, performance. So it's fine. I mean, if, if we feel that if, if 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 the party is is that offended by this, then I'll take that chick out. But I am not talking to anybody in authority about anything <laughs> to do with this theater. Well, for the record, we don't we don't even we don't none of us know but you. So. <laughs> There's no way we could be offended. And you have a friend for life. You helped move a dead body. Right, exactly. I mean, she's kind of crazy, but... Yeah. I mean, are we it's all... Not, it's not bad to have something on someone. <laughs> so, and that but moment... But she is a murderess. I don't know. In that moment where the older brother murders the younger in the middle of the, of the nuptials, blood sprays out from the... over the audience... And there's a, there's a part of you that's like, oh my gosh. And then you're like, wait a minute, that's not what blood looks like when it comes out of a body. That's not how that technically works. Um, I know, firsthand. <laughs> recently. And, and all oh, yeah, from ago, earlier today. <laughs> from firsthand knowledge. A few minutes ago. Um, but it, it, the audience is like, oh my God. And they're totally taken with it. Um, and you can catch sight of the person you're following handing something or leaning forward to talk to the two people directly in front of her. Was Nala able to get our attention? So are yes. we all, like, we're all looking at this? Yes. You can see that okay. she's starting to whisper with the two people directly in front of her. Bink, bink. Yes. Oh, all right. This is going to be, I don't know if this is going to be the best, but I'm going to, as a cat, stand right next to her, turn back to a person, and cast Charm Person on her. Like, so just like reappear crouched next to her and put my hand on her shoulder and cast Charm Person and be like, I'm supposed to be here. This is fine. I'm supposed to be here. You're just going to flump into person mode. And before she can blink, hit Charm. Yes. And, and, all, and I'm, I'm supposed to be here. Okay. That's, um, okay. That that's is. Thing. And there's a big distracting murder going on on stage. So I'm hoping that's enough for people to not know. I mean, I'm, they're not looking at me. They're looking up front. So. Okay. That's a thing. That is definitely a thing. Uh, let's see what happens. What is what is her resistance for a charm? Um, it's wisdom? It is, I think it's wisdom. Wisdom 12. Wisdom 12. All right, let's throw the die down. Uh, okay. Wait a second. I've been here the whole time. Yeah, something like that. I'm your friend. I'm supposed to be here. Wasn't that, isn't that how charm person works? They, I am the contact. I am their friend. For. Yes. And she kind of blinks at you and goes, of course you are. I just want to listen to the conversation. Just see other people don't know anything about it. So, um, yeah, they're going to notice. You're so hoping appearance. they were facing forward, facing forward. Oh no. Cause they're like, the, uh, this is what made it stick out. The three of them are, are conversing as you enter. Does that change anything? Um, Give you a chance. I'm trying to think of how I want to do it. I guess I'll just stay a cat because I can listen. Okay. I want to, yeah, I'll just listen. Fair enough. Um, they're whispering back and forth about when to do the full handoff. Because they're they need to they need to get the stone, and she's like, I'm not I'm not comfortable. There's still people around. I think we should do it later. 
and no, no, just give it to us now, and then we'll we'll leave during intermission. I, like, I don't know if I trust. Like you'll be able to get out of here. I think I, I think I saw one of them coming in. But we need to take the stone now. We can't wait much longer. And that's when the the scene on the stage is shifting now, and you're watching a series of special effects as the as the elder brother is being transformed into a, a type of demon creature. The the murderess uh, is standing by s- screaming as this happens in time with the music, no less. <laughs> it's quite the quite the scene change. And the backdrop begins to rotate as though they are like rising up on the top of a castle. Production values are fantastic. Yeah, well, you hire a couple of wizards uh... to do some cantrips and it all works. And they go they go back and forth and back and forth about whether or not they're going to hand it off now or not. At this point, every um, everyone that's in the party will have definitely spotted that there is something going on in that area as everyone in the audience besides you three are watching the spectacle on stage and these three are having this tight conversation as two of them are leaning back and one's leaning forward is anyone else doing anything interesting um we lost our win Muted. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I I can't I can't hear what they're saying, but seeing them, hang on. How many spell slots do I have? Oh, I'm I'm okay. Well, you know, this is this is these are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Things, things <laughs> um, DMs love to hear. How many spell slots do I have? Is usually followed by. I can I try? <laughs> no, I like I know I can do it. I'm just like, do I want to do it now or later? But I can't I can't hear what they're saying. I just see them conversing. So I am going to cast locate object because I want to know if they have the stone. So it says an it says an object you're familiar with. You have never seen the stone of Golor. Do I have to know what it do I have to know what it looks like or I have to just know like do, it's about this size? I know what it is. Because I because I we saw her like carrying a bundle. Do I have to know more about it than that? Like should. I know what it is. I know how about how big it is. <laughs> That's fine if not. I just I wasn't sure like well, let me, what does familiar what does familiar me, with me? Let me let me. If not, have, that's totally. Do you fair. have locate object prep today? I do. I made sure I came in with it prepped. Okay. Let me refresh. Let me let me consult the the the, the rules as written in their plain text. All right. And then we will have a brief conversation. Okay. <laughs> An object that is familiar to you. You can sense the direction. Da, 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 da. That it's that familiar part that I'm sticking on. Right. That feels because that could be weird. like. Yeah. So tell you what. Tell you what. Um, it's a first level spell. It's a, I think it's a second level spell. It is a second level spell. It's a second level spell. Tell you what, give me a... Scrolling through there. Under the circumstances, I'm going to ask you to give me an Arcana check. That is more than fair. And depending on how you do, we can either rule whether or not you... And you do not spell expend the spell slot if you don't feel familiar enough to try. Okay. Straight 12. Cool. You're not familiar enough with the stone to use that as your identifying to, to identify on it. You're, you've Fair. heard of it, but to be honest, you don't know: is it a gemstone? Is it a fancy rock? Is it is it you know a pebble? Is it a like the size of a, it could be anything from that pouch she was carrying? Fair. Okay. So in that case, then I'm I'm just gonna watch them and wait. And if any of them if any of them like gets up to leave, I'm gonna be ready to get up and follow. Okay. That's fair. Um, is Shakira doing anything of particular in this grand scene on the stage? Both on the scene on and off? 
She's she's got her her sights deadlocked on on what's going on in the conversation these people are having. Um, I don't have anything to where I could I, I don't think anyway to where I can see if I know what the stone itself looks like, and I'm not sure that I can hear from that far away. Not really. What's going on? No, okay. You're, but you're um, definitely aware see... there's something going on. From next to her, like as a cat, can I see if I can see if she has something on her? Uh, yes. I mean, of course, I can't see. I can see if she has the bag from last night. There's also the clear com- conversation of she's here to pass the stone off. Right. So, I was, but I was wondering if she stored it elsewhere or if it's on her person. Oh, she definitely is making motions like it's not like it's on her right now. Okay. It is definitely on um, her right now. I'm going to go to Chrisette at the mom and just meow furiously. Like it's time to turn the lights red. <laughs> red or yellow? Lor- Lorelai heads for the exit. Probably yellow. Uh, yeah, I want to go okay. through the lobby and, and be right here and kind of watch around the corner. Okay. Okay. So just now we have confirmation that it's here and the person's here. So. Okay. So. Okay. Nala, well, I, okay. Like I saw her come here. Okay. These are all people sitting in seats, or are we in the back? Are we standing along the back wall? The, everyone's in the seat. Shit. So these are all seats right, through then. here. I guess I'll just have to let them do what they're gonna do. Okay. Okay. That's totally doable. Let me check my notes for what's about to go down. Shazbot. How many is that supposed to be? You know what? I'll figure that out in a second. Uh, So we use there. And we use there. And then we use there and there. Okay. That'll work. Um, Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of like peek around this corner down the road. And see if That's I can even better. Oh shit! Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, okay. As you are uh, watching the scene unfold on stage, the um, you notice a platform has come up slightly, and the the haughty one in the demon form suddenly starts to rise upwards as the platform goes up off stage. The backdrop begins to scroll as the murderess playing the part of the lovely woman leaps out into space out off the platform drops a few feet and then the scroll goes to indicate she is falling thousands of thousands of feet the music hits a crescendo in this moment and at that second the door to the alleyway bursts open And a figure steps into it wearing, she's wearing like these very light white robes and has a a serpent staff in hand. At the same time, another individual climbs these stairs and just pulls her hands (laughs) apart to create a burst of flame and says, all right, act one is over. Nobody move until we say act two starts. By the way, have your valuables ready. Oh, it's a robbery. And at that time, Lorelai will be pushed by several people pushing their way up these stairs. Is and there any way, like, is anybody looking directly, like, could I sl- sl- slink down into the chair so I'm, like, sitting in it properly? Absolutely. But we're going to figure out what, what all of what happens now after a short break. Ah. <laughs> Let's get All some right. water, top our potent potables, stretch ah. a moment. There is a lot going on. Ooh. Because we, well, you know, you don't go to the theater for a boring time. No. Fair. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we'll see you all back here in a couple of minutes. While you're waiting, enjoy a couple of clips from the channel. Try exclamation point merch. If you want to check out an opportunity to support the stream with some awesome stuff, which even our amazing Arwen is currently modeling for us. If you'd like your own troll skull irregular t-shirt. Um, and talk the amongst yourselves. The mugs are pretty fantastic too. We'll see you in a bit. You're swinging again. Oh man, oh, this, this guy. guy is tough. This guy. What's up with this guy? The, he's what? He's... What? This doesn't happen. <laughs> this doesn't happen. All right, we're going. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. And followed by the smite. Come on, Timber. We got this. I mean, if he doesn't go down now, I don't know. And he go, he dro finally drops. Yes. And is out of the scrap. Um. Gets to the guy in the. Maybe reroll. Yeah, reroll it. Reroll <laughs> it. The birds yeah, are yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We re Everyone's we in on these, the reroll. I screwed these birds right. up earlier. We need Come a on. high roll. We got yeah. this. Let's do this. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh my. So, um. Every time! I'm the bard who does not want to be a. I'm really bad at being a bard. That is amazing. Worst bard ever. <laughs> Um, yeah. The good news is, after this adventure, you can start taking levels of anything else. Anything else? <laughs> what the hell? Um, okay. Let's yeah. See. Yes. So we assume this guy is bad. Oh, he's super bad. Well, you know. Okay. That's all I needed to know. Good. I mean, he keeps I on have... trying to. He's a dick. He keeps on trying to coerce Irina into coming up to his castle and fucking die, become a vampire lady, and she's not into it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, okay. Special and, like, not forced or anything. It's just, it's brilliant. Um, I think the quote I have in particular is actually came from chat, which was uh, the spell slide into DMs, which then became a spell. Um, that's just... <laughs> very it's very endearing so i love it <laughs> i'm going to follow it up with by saying that the the reaction to receiving a message spell was an absolute just as far as role play goes having taken a, a holy order of some kind and other oaths i'm thinking like an elven like really Kung Fu Elfin Monk? Kung Fu Elfin Monk. Okay. Yes. That meditates a lot. I can I yeah. can I can live with that. Because elves don't have to sleep as much, so it's totally right. <laughs> oh jeez. Boy, that sucks. Boy, I feel bad for him. Okay. I've never seen it. <laughs> Unspeakable brutality. What yeah, a little closer. Go to the right. Oh no, I dropped down. Oh no, I'm under us. Uh, I think they're sinking. Yeah, yeah they suck. Okay, drop wow. the anchor so we can collect our stuff. I feel like we should not be meddling anyway. If there's someone killing someone else, it might be for good reason. You don't know. Oh my. Look <laughs> how <laughs> dark. Wow. We have killed lots of people for various <laughs> and sometimes no good reason. Yeah, she's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good lord, we're murdering I do not want to judge, okay? Uh, uh, am I to conclude the party is going to enter into the house? Yes. Uh, yeah. As you seem to be doing really well with it. Ooh, Matt 20 uh, 25. Oh my god. Nice. I shattered it. <laughs> wow. Well, you can roll your damage. I don't 25? Because <laughs> I got three sixes? <laughs> Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Why she just hulked out. 
rage hard. Yeah, I think you should rage all the time. I think you I should like never rage. not, yeah. Yeah, this, never this not be it. raging. <laughs> well, There's like where all two. our good roles were hiding. Yeah, oh my gosh. That's why they were so bad earlier. We were saving up. But... Stop hitting my friends. <laughs> Oop, wrong They're way. damaged books with that kind of attitude. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Wow. Sorry. The one that's got the one that's between Chrysanthemum and her bottle. Yes. Yes. That's a dangerous place to be for many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that whole love interest thing. That's right. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I almost killed him. <laughs> I... I'm gonna go. Common, Mother Clucker, do you speak it? <laughs> <laughs> we need some information. <laughs> I'm not sorry, by the way. Punch the. No, I know that's a bad idea. There <laughs> is so much nope <laughs> surrounding this trap. <laughs> I am not here for an amulet. I am here for a traumatized rogue. Let's get the fuck out of here. Oh, I'm sorry. That's two. <laughs> well, I wasn't really concerned about the amulet. I just thought that beat you, they get to win. Okay, now we're back. Whew. Okay, so let's recap. Here's the theater. So in the theater, we have uh, four PCs, two here, one here, and one here. Why are they there? Because they're pretty sure this individual took off with a stone of gold or last night and made her escape across the rooftops of Waterdeep. Who are these two people? We're not sure, but they're people that are all conversing about handing the stone off and getting it to where it belongs. Simple enough. Not a big deal, right? Well, a couple of complications. Complication one, there's a dead body in the prop room. You know what this is? I mean, I know this is probably not exactly what this is, but the beginning of Pulp Fiction, when they have Marcellus Wallace's briefcase, and they're just eating, and then the two jump up on the table and rob the place. I mean, like, this is like, except for now there's another layer on top of that, because we're here, and the dead body's here. We didn't just already take care of the dead body, it's here in the closet. So, geez. I will say, I have actually never seen Pulp Fiction. Oh, wow. I know. Oh. I know, I know. Need to have a movie either. night. Need I haven't seen it either. Night. If you honestly, Ooh. if you watch it, you the the similarity is like, but it's I, spot on. I feel shockingly validated by this because I know Pulp Fiction is considered like a great film. You're all shocked I've never seen it, um, which then implies that it has good story. And without that influence, I still created this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I will take that for I will take that for the unintentional compliment it was. <laughs> I thought this was a pre a pre written event. I was just like, wow, they just like channeled that Pulp Fiction vibe. No, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. This um, we're gonna do a stick up during the theater while you're trying to get out of here with the stone with a dead body. That's I was I was telling um, I will we're admit not taking the dead body. Well, yeah, that one's probably staying here. Um, no, I, yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not our fault. So I will confess that that this was meant to be a short, like, oh yeah, they get there. There's a handoff. They can interrupt the handoff, and here's what happens. And I went, oh no, 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 no. We're making, we're making a session out of this. <laughs> Simple handoff, my ass. Nothing's ever easy. <sighs> Do I get to respond to being pushed? Uh, sure. Great. I want to stumble down the aisle conveniently to here. Okay. Perfectly. And then my next move reasonable. is going to be to tackle this thief and try to rustle the bag away from her. <laughs> but find the bag on her and get it off of her. That's the goal. 
Well, I figure there's going to be chaos ensuing while everyone screams and dives under chairs and whatnot. Which begs my my first question: Could I fit under the chair? Uh, yes. Okay. Coming with you. <laughs> then my my immediate course of action is going to be to like as quietly as possible slide like down the back and try and get under the chair if I can. Okay. Arwen hides under the chair. Nala stays in the chair as a cat. Lorelai is tackling the rogue that we think may still have the stone and has not successfully done the handoff yet. What is Sharkira doing in that moment where she sees Lorelai just gang tackle this person in the middle of the holdup? Let's not forget. Uh, you gotta stay focused on the goal. There are bandits here who are robbing the theater. That's fair. That's fair. Um, I want to say that I will move towards her, or I was thinking of doing that, or going on the stairs next to me, but I don't think that'll really help anything. So maybe I'll just. Hey, only start... one person is tackling right now, for the record. It's not that's three true. It's been a pattern in past <laughs> sessions. <laughs> Chickity, oh, okay. tackled, chickity tackled, and then Shakira tackled, and <laughs> so I mean, just oh, like, okay. what are you doing? Well, we're just we're Pokemon traders. We we see the Pokemon come out, we're like tackle. We're not wasting time with <laughs> tail whip or growl. It's tackle. It's gonna go for it. Yeah, so all tackle all the now. time. <laughs> well, okay. Now, I'm assuming chaos is gonna erupt in this theater, and people aren't just going to like sit there. No, gosh, no. Okay, so yeah, so that that is if there's like chaos going on, then we want to like concerted effort. Just use all of our different anti-light powers to just turn the freaking lights off, <clears throat> so we can I get know. away with this crime in the middle of a stick-up, and no one will know what happened. <laughs> can I anti-light with my? That would be. I like that plan because we can oh, dis distinguish dark, extinguish so flames, and yeah, we can we can basically all see in the dark. So. Um, I, okay, I can't I I can't extinguish. I can dim. Dim. Okay, and but you get pretty dim. Also, for what it's worth, um, the lighting in here is magically created. It's going to take a bit of work to uncreate. Okay. okay. That's why right, I was like, like maybe with magic. the yeah. Oh, just how magic. I don't actually have that spell. Yeah, it's it doesn't take a lot to set it up, but this is like this is a running theater. They've 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 made the investments. Because why, you know, it's it's kinda like hiring the lighting crew. You just hire a bunch of wizards to cast all their continual light spells and put in the trigger words. So Yeah. I mean that's fair. Generally speaking. Um Okay. So that's an option. Everyone's kind of watching to see what happens. The chaos, most people are like, the crowd is relatively panicked. But most are like, looking like they're ready to be compliant. Like, let's just get this over with quickly and harmlessly. Which is when Lorelai launches herself at the uh, the rogue. I will need Lorelai to roll me an uh, unarmed strike. Because once again, you all seem to want me to try to interpret the grapple rules. <laughs> one of the one of the rules they never did a great job with in here. I good oh. God. A natural twenty. I was oh. owed that after last week. That's fair. That is absolutely fair. Um, Lorelai, <laughs> like, yeah, you launch yourself right into her and just take her out. Like, she, you've got her in a bear hug. You guys go straight down into the, uh, into the, between the seats. People are moving to get out of your way. The two people in front were like, whoa, and they stand up with this, this look of, like, shock and alarm. And that's when the woman down here with the fire goes, wait, this is our robbery. Get her, guys. <laughs> yeah, because that's, that's man stealer, home wrecker. <laughs> oh, you're trying to summon the, the angry lady from the stage. Oh, no, oh, no, I, no, because I'm, uh, you know, taking a page out of her book. I just want him to think that I'm attacking this woman because she was going after my man. I don't want them to know I'm trying to steal her purse. Um, so as as 
um, I'm assuming the attention's kind of on Lorelai. Can I like scoot myself m- more towards them? Like, crawl like, between the under crawl chairs. under the seats. <laughs> crawl under the seats. Because like if somebody if if if, if, so, if she happens to drop anything, I could like <laughs> snatch it off the floor. Okay. Or failing that, I could just be closer in case. I didn't mean, and if I see it, I could just grab it and sprint. It's just a cat grabs a bag and freaking runs so you out guys the back are door. There. Um, There's bacon in that bag. Locked and rolling around. Get him. Um, yeah, combat happens now. I was going to see how far we could go with just let's talk it through. Nope, nope. Combat happens now. Yeah, I think that went out the window with the natural 20. But I didn't kill anybody. But no. you still started the combat. <laughs> uh, it's the nobody else will be able to read it but you all. But I'm labeling all of the nameless brigands. They all have little number labels. Um, I'm going to load up the combat tracker and then I'll label everybody's tokens. Get ready to to try to keep track of what's going on. Oh boy! Because <laughs> there's a lot of people here right now. So, and they all have things they're going to be trying to do. And we'll see how well I can handle running this kind of a combat. I have never done a mass melee before. This should be, this should, this proves to be interesting. What's the name of the other NPC? Agorn and Amoth. That's kind of a cheesy name. Um, and then there's also present, uh, let's see, some bandits. One, two, three, four, five, six. And oh, I wrote their names down, so I wouldn't forget. And the Lindworm. Okay. Oh, well, the good news on the combat tracker, I actually have tokens made up for Valentina and the Lindworm because I want them to come back later because they're kind of cool. Um, but just to be clear, Agorn is this dude. He's the blade. And Amos is the anything. book. I wasn't either. I was going to refresh. I haven't hit go yet. Oh, oh, gotcha. We need initiative rolls from everybody. So far, we have Nala's. Oh, sorry. No problem. <laughs> I got distracted. It, nothing will happen right. until I push. I've just been loading. I haven't pushed start yet. I have the real life initiative, but I don't have it nice. in game. Well, you're sliding into position. Actually, I think Lorelai technically has the real life initiative. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Chrysanthemum. Uh, Sharkira and Lorelai still maintains the initiative. Bink. As everybody has a thing to do. Yeah, well, she sees the initiative and she gets to go first. Um, I will tell you that this person is trying, Vet is trying to get away from you. No doubt. She is desperate to get detangled from you. Um, and is actively fighting. I will give you a chance, though, to search her for a pouch that's the appropriate size and shape. That is what I would like to do. Not my first word I was going to go to, but I think it's the right word we want for the moment. Quick question. When they came when they came in and first started um, menacing people, could I have would I have gotten a, a good glimpse of any of them? Or would it have been too dark? They would have just been like shadow Oh, the people figures. coming in? The people coming in. Like the people with... There's light enough that you can There's identify light. them. Oh, I, yeah. could, I, could, I could recognize them. Yeah. You or could... make myself look like them if the situation called for it. Yes. Okay. Good to know. Nice. Yes. Yes. You could, yes. The Lindworm Good is the know. one in the white robes. The other one's kind of wearing like a, a swashbuckly... Um, top and she's got like this leather harness strapped on okay um and they're all they're all medium size i'm guessing mm-hmm. 
Okay. And the bandits are dressed as, as 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 generic extras the that we hired too. for this that have a little bit of combat training. There's one who's already pulled the sleeves off of his uniform because he thinks it makes him look more badass. Oh. And, and he's well the thing is, he's gonna find out in about an hour and a half that, that was really stupid. Because believe it or not, that sleeve provides padding for every time he has to take a stage fall. Oh. Um, this story brought to you by Ray Parks, who actually had this happen when he was one of the extra combatants on the initial Mortal Kombat movie. That's interesting. They told That's him he could, he said, can I pull the sleeves off so I have a little more motion? They said, sure. And then he was the only guy who did. And he learned that night why nobody else did. <laughs> that checks out. Yeah, fun stories. <laughs> that awkward moment. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. It's weird to think about Ray Park also as an extra. Because Darth Maul. Okay, so give me yeah. a. You're gonna you're searching her body while you're wrestling. Yes. What would you like to roll for that? And convince me it's the right thing. I sleight of hand. I think. Go for it. No explanation needed. That's perfect. Okay. Um, you do feel like you have a pouch about the right size and weight of a stone. Of significance that you can jump, yank right off of her. Nice. Um, are you maintaining your grapple on her, or are you letting her go now that you're holding on to something? Um. No, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna continue my pretense and just be like, just pummeling and screaming at her for stealing my man. I'm and, gonna try and hiss. Like Lorelai from yeah, under do the... I, Can I see Chrysanthemum or Nala at this point? To keep my life simple, you can see everybody. <laughs> and there, I okay. do not want to start down the road of who can see what, who knows what. That's I'm I'm old. I want to go to bed before eleven. <laughs> Great. I want to I want to toss the pouch to them. Like just shoot it under the under the chairs. That'll be awesome. Next action. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. Cool. Meanwhile, there's some chaos. Uh, she's not cool with you having upset everything that's going on. So she's going to try to keep you contained. I need Lorelai to roll me a wisdom save. Great. Uh, yeah, that's not that hard to, to, to succeed on. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, it is kind of apparently hard to succeed on. It, it um, is. Let me, me do this because I don't have this document in front of me um, and I don't have your two free rerolls in it yet. So I'm going to throw that up there right now. So you remember, you do have two free rerolls tonight if you think you need to use them. Um, get the right one in front of me. I don't know if you want to use them here and chat can always provide you more as we go along. Okay, there they are. They're in the Book of Fate. The one thing I forgot to open and have up and running tonight was the Book of Fate. Well, tuck that over there where it belongs. Thinking that I might actually have what I need and that I need to do something with it to not be in possession of it any longer, I think that a reroll would be wise. You really want to not... use it here. If there's a lot that's going to happen in the next 45 minutes. Well. But that's your call. What do you guys think? Wait. Okay. I, I'd, I'd say maybe wait. Okay. <laughs> We can wait. Okay. You actually start to reach to throw the pouch. It's still clenched in your fingers as your body slows to a stop. Oh. Okay. As the Lindworm points at you and casts hold person. Okay. I'm willing you with my eyes to come get this bag. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, all right, once the cat's turn, I'm going to try to run over and steal it from you. Okay. Um, the Which one is Lindworm? Uh, the one in white. At the top. Okay, uh, gotcha. Bandit number three is rushing over there and is going to attempt to take what you're holding because obviously it's important. Um, but he's not making an attack this turn. Aha! He pulls it from your fingers and holds it back towards the other person. Darn. So close. 
Yes. Uh. Reroll with uh, your channel points is on a one hour cooldown, I think. It's really long. It's like meant to be like one per session. Um, but you can always cheer. Cheers go into the Book of Fate and give them more rerolls. Or you can use the sound alert to immediately call for a reroll that way. Um, it's it's a bit more of an investment, but it's immediate and it's guaranteed to go off and there's no cooldown on it. Uh, Shakira has an action. You glance over and you see that the Lindworm is concentrating on a spell to keep Lorelei from moving. There's a bandit next to her holding up a pouch that he has taken off Lorelei. Well, I'm thinking that if I can um, kind of free Lorelai from being restrained, that she may be able to get it back somehow. Okay. One of our cohorts will. So, let's see what I have here. Um, can I cast a firebolt? I forgot the person's name, but the one right below Lorelai. Uh, the woman that she stole the stone from, who's holding on, is she's the oh, one that's that... holding on to her? No, no, Sorry. she's not being held. Um, the the woman in white at the far side of the auditorium is casting a spell that's holding Lorelai in place. Gotcha. Okay. I don't um... point blank the thief in the head. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Um, I would like to cast a firebolt at said lady to see if I can distract her at least for a little bit to withdraw her hold on Lorelai. Viable plan? Uh, make your, well, let's see. Well, first you're going to have to get within range. So let's move you there. Womp. Yep. And then... Shwink. Yeah, and that's going to go wide. Unfortunately. Ugh. And Darn. by the way, for chat, it's called Force a Reroll. It looks a little weird because it wraps around on it. But I, I just double-checked. I do see it there. Um, if that's the thing you want to use. Um... Interesting enough, the ones that are based on channel points, I don't see. But it's, it's, a, it's a bit based one. Um, anyway, meanwhile, continuing the combat, uh, Egrorn is going to get out of dodge. He is not getting paid enough to deal with this. He is going to run towards this exit. He's going to take a swing at the crazy lady standing in the doorway. Because he can, and he wants out. Uh, he misses with that attack. I think he gets the one. Oh, no, he'll do this instead. I didn't see that he had that spell. Nope, he did his shot. She's blocking the door. He's fighting with her, trying to get her out. She's still concentrating. Up next is Bandit 4. Bandit 4 is going to do nothing of interest. What's Chrysanthemum doing? So who has the uh, who has the sack? Bandit three has it. Bandit three. I will label him. He is now tagged as the ball carrier. Okay. For our, our fans of the rugby and the football, <laughs> he is the one you may legally tackle. All right. Uh, has the flag. There's rules about that. Asks the uh, one that hit the dead body in the prop room. Let's see. The rule was hide the body or get in trouble. So hide the Thank body. You. Thank you. Um, and Lor Lorelai is still being <laughs> held, right? Yes. Lorelai is still being held by the uh, whole person spell. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Does, does bandit number three look like he's going anywhere? Like, he's, is he poised to run or is he just holding on to it and like trying to take stock of the situation? At the moment, he's taking stock. He's had six okay. seconds to get over there and get the thing out of her hand because it's obviously valuable. 
Okay, in that case, I'm going to um, I'm going to cast Toll the Dead at the um, the Lindworm and try and break her concentration on um, okay. Lorelei. Wisdom save. Yes. Roll damage. One. One yeah. point of damage. Ah, one ah, point ah, of damage. Ah, <laughs> ah, 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 ah. She takes one. Okay. Uh, and she maintains her concentration. All right. Um, then with my with my movement, I'm just going to kind of scoot so I'm positioned nearer to Lorelei and Bandit number three. Okay. Not a problem in this situation. Uh, bandits one and two are... Uh, one is coming over here to fight with Ag Agorn. One is coming over here to, to see what three found. Uh, what's Nala doing? Um, bite his ankle. I guess they could bite his ankle. Um, <laughs> now, see, I, 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 I almost want to su rec suggest the convert to human form and perform an uppercut in one motion. Oh, I mean, we were cool. just talking about Mortal Kombat. <laughs> um, do we have uh, playbills nearby? Sure. Playbills are made of paper, uh, right? And that's yeah. made of wood. Can I use shillelagh with a playbill? <laughs> this is this technically made of <laughs> the same <laughs> stuff I would need, right? What? <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. The only way I think that that might work, because um, yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> I guess I'll <laughs> turn into a person, Brilliant, scoop man. the playbill off the floor, and Hold it will up. magically glow like the freaking sword in Sleeping Beauty when she goes to slay the dragon, and just right into the bottom of his throat. Uh, it, no, Shillelagh's a club. It has to be a club. It's a club. A shillelagh is a club. You're rolling up a bunch of playbills into a exactly, thwopper, and you're and I'm going to thwop him. him. Yeah, I'm thwopping him in the throat. I, you could still <laughs> thwop someone in the throat. It hurts. Roll, roll <laughs> I your, agree. Roll your attack. All right. Wow. I, <laughs> that was a lot for nothing. It was an epic I mean, thing. I'm guessing it's just that the, I hit him with it and it just didn't work. Like, man, I really wish I would have just grabbed my club off my back. Probably would have been a better idea. There we go. Okay. That's our goal. You stab it with a rolled up playbill. Yeah, and he's just so like, are you, are you serious? I mean, if you guys can just get him to drop it, like I'm trying to position myself so that I can grab it if it hits the floor. Huh. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. What a great improvised weapon. That is that is grade A. Here's the good news. I was hoping it would do a little more, but Bandit where... three is dead. Wow. The bad news is. Uh the woman in the mask now has the 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 uh, the pouch. Dang it! <laughs> I'll label her too, just to be clear. Uh, that's vet. As she like rolls out from underneath Lorelai and just launches upwards with a series of dagger attacks, and as he starts to fall backwards, just puts a hand out. The pouch drops into it, and she then takes a moment to take stock of the situation she's in. She's close enough to the other one that she's not going to try to run because he's right there, but she's currently holding the pouch. Valentina's not cricket with what y'all been up to. She's starting to get a little cheesed about everyone not behaving like they're supposed to. Yeah, those cats turning into people and trying to hit my people with playbills. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, it's not, it's not according to plan. Like No. It is is decidedly not an appropriate action. Um, so what she's going to do 
is. Let me double check the what the rip up of sixty foot line. Uh, yep. Okay. Each creature starts its turn in line. Must make us for the spell's duration. Oh. Okay. Cool. This just got real. Uh oh. Um. Yeah. She's gonna sidestep here. And the 60 foot line is right there. So that line right there. If I can draw a little better. Okay. And now she's concentrating. Uh oh. What do you mean, uh oh? You're in white everything on fire and dc is strength based uh i want to write down the target because i don't want to mess with it anymore uh so i'm just going to write that down there we go strength okay she claps her hands together and starts to blast a gust of wind right mm. through that space um I'm going to see. So Amoth needs to roll. Lorelai, here's the good news. You don't need to roll. You're not going anywhere. Hooray magic. <laughs> Yay. So that hey, actually laying on the ground. <laughs> works to your advantage. Um, which okay, number does that? Physics. That's one. How does one do? I think one's in trouble. One is not in trouble. And okay. And then a moth. I think she's going to be fine with this moment, but we'll see. Oh, no, she's not. She's definitely uh -oh. not. Okay, cool. So here's what happens. Uh, one. Eep, wrong button. One is now over here. That is now here. A moth is now here. And the pouch is now pinned against the wall. Right there. Mm. I'm not sure that was the best move. I don't care. <laughs> Bandits five and six have actions. Uh, yeah, they're just maintaining their positions for now. <laughs> they're like, we're gonna, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is all getting really serious. Uh... Mm. Oh, cool. We'll try that spell. Oof. Yep. Okay, we're just going to cast it. I don't care if it works or not. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, a moth turns and starts channeling magic back at uh, the woman in the doorway. And for all of that effort, it all cancels out. And she'll use her turn and her spell slot to dispel the gust of wind. And the pouch drops to the floor. Which then takes us around to Lorelai, who can give me a wisdom save. Okie dokie. Please make it. Really? <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. You're close. Um, sh let's I'm see. That was not a successful. That save. was not. It was. Oh, okay. oh, 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 wait, wait. Shan has your back. That will hey. get you over the hump. And you get an action. That's my roommate. Let me scroll through here and get you back up. So we can all appreciate your entrance into the fight. And he said, I think I broke the initiative tracker. 
Okay. So what is Lorelai doing as as she shakes off the effects of that spell? Uh, I'm going to jump up and make a run for the bag. You're going to provoke a lot of attacks of opportunity on the way. Or do you want to use your disengage action? Because um, if you use disengage, you can get there. That's all you do, though, is you're just focused on not getting hit. Yeah. You can get there and pick it up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you, so I don't need any acrobatics or anything. Just do, do disengage. You serpentine your way there. Okay, cool. And you are now officially the ball carrier. Woo! Oh, no, that means I can be tackled. <laughs> Thank you for saving me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> me and Will saves are not good. Think we will now attach you as the ball carrier. All right. That's not a bad action. Now, meanwhile, the Lindworm is not cricket with what just happened. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, let's hit. No, she's dealing with the guy right in front of her. So, bump, bump. He, she hits him, does some damage. He's fighting with her. She's fighting with him. They're kind of doing their thing, dancing in the doorway. Uh, what's Sharkira doing? Um, well, let me ask this. Is a moth still still up and at him? Yes, or she's standing in the uh, in the stairway, in the aisle. Having recently just grabbed the magic from the gust of wind and just stuffed it between her hands and snuffed it out. And it's looking kind of pissed. I'm trying to think because uh, I know that now that Lorelai has the bag, one of them has got to have noticed that she has it now and will want to make a run at her. Um, may I ask what bandit number one is doing? Uh, picking himself up. Okay. Well, screw him. And... <laughs> <laughs> we'll just let him get up. He'll get back up again eventually. But uh, I would say let's do. I want to move. Can I move uh, into the aisle? Or I guess that's an aisle that a moth is standing in. Mm hmm. Okay. 30 feet, roughly. So yeah, you can get anywhere 30 feet. Perfect. Okay. I want to move in the aisle where a moth is. And then I would like to. I would like to cast Burning Hands. Okay. Maybe. Oh, everyone? No, God. Maybe not. I'm well, scared. okay. Now, if you were to step up here and cast it, that would be a little different. Because you could conceivably not... If you're going for these three, you could do that. Or you could go for... I don't know if you can see me measuring. Mm -hmm. So you can go this way. Or you can go this way. But if you go like everybody here, you're going to catch Lorelei. Yeah, I don't want to catch Lorelei. So no. let's. Unless you have a feat. I don't think you have a feat that lets you not do that. He said double checking. Spell casting, arcane recovery, illusion savant. I don't see one. Now, she's tough. She might make her deck save. You could just say, screw it, burn them all. Improved uh, decks, right? <laughs> She, or improved evasion. If she succeeds, she doesn't take half as uh, a rogue. She might. I don't see it on there. He said, looking at her character sheet. Maybe that's a five or a three thing. I think it's a three thing. Or it's a, you have to like take it or it's a fifth level thing, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, I don't remember. I've never actually played a rogue. <laughs> she does have rakish audacity. She adds her charisma modifier to initiative rolls. And she doesn't need Ooh. advantage on an attack to use sneak attack as long as nothing else is within five feet of her. Mm. I just thought that rakish audacity fit any character Liz comes up with. <laughs> like that just struck me as very Liz. So what do you want to do? Do you want to burn them all or do you want to pick a group of three? No, pick a group of three. <laughs> okay. Which three do you want? I mean, okay with it. I'll, I'll duck. It's fine. <laughs> well, 
I mean, if I can go to the three there next to me, one uh, vet and a moth, can I make that work? Oh, yeah. You can totally step into position, just blast over that area. Um, right. Now, there's a whole bunch of commoners there that are hiding behind chairs, but they'll all duck. I'm sure they're already ducking. They, they'll figure it out. Okay. Uh, roll your damage, and they're going to roll their saves. It's not bad. Not bad. Fuck commoners. And a moth. Bing. Okay. Uh, did you cast it at level one or at level two? Uh, oh, I did level one. He did level one. Uh, roll one more. Click on the damage again. I'll count the first number. I'm assuming you want to use your level two slots at this point. Oh, wait. Sorry. I got you covered. I got you covered. So two, <laughs> so a total of nine. That's not bad. Uh, let's see. Bandit number one is no longer part of the game. <laughs> He's incinerated in the blast of flames. Eliminated. And um, meanwhile, that that actually picks up a chair from the person. In front. Like she picks up a chair, and there's this half lean on it. She holds it up, and then she like hold, starts to hold up the block, and just sort of like tips it sideways. He falls to the floor, and she holds the chair out to block some of the damage. Um, a moth also is going to uh, dive for cover. But you made quite the statement. Agorn is going to... What is he going to do? He's like... Uh, oh. Oh? Oh. Okay. He's going to back up. Uh, back up towards you. Actually, no, he's going to go right there in the middle. He steps into the aisle, looks around, and this could pull, like, reaches up, grabs onto something in front of him in space, says a few words, and pulls down. And it's like he's pulled down a curtain and he vanishes from your sight. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go and I'm going to put invisible. Oh boy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he's not he's not playing games here. I believe four. Yeah, four is just protect covering the door. Which gives us chrysanthemum. Thank okay. God you all had really spread out roles, so I don't have to do too much at one time. <laughs> Um, so Vet is the original thief with the lip, correct? Yes. Okay. So here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to scoot close. Okay. And then just like whack her in her good foot with my mace. And then scoot a, a different direction. Like I'm trying to, so that nobody has a good beat on where I am. <laughs> Oh, you're, you're still crawling around? I'm still crawling around. Okay. So I'm just going to, like, sideways plonk into her, like, her good <laughs> foot, her ankle. Okay. And then scooch out the way. Um, and then I get a bo I have a bonus action, right? Yeah. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to cast my spiritual weapon. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yes. I think that would be a good thing to have right So now. we're going to summon the shimmering wine bottle. Yep. Love the spiritual weapon. Spiritual weapon is my Yay. friend. Uh, okay, we'll use that to represent it. And does it, it does it attack the turn it comes in? I think mm. it does. Oh, what are you attacking with it? Spiritual weapon. Um, I'm gonna. Uh, let's see. Where would you like it to be? Um. So there's. Pardon me. There's a lot of people on the board. Um, there are. Who is? Who is directly engaging one of my friends? At the moment, nobody. Nobody. Okay. Oh, that's right. And one is dead. He's off the board. 
So far, right now, for the, in this exact moment, everyone is perfectly safe. Okay. Um. For the Get moment. rid of that one in the aisle, and we all run for it. That's probably a good idea. So I'm gonna position. I'm gonna. I'm gonna um, manifest it right by. You mean a moth? That freaking. Yeah. Where's the? Okay. Find my That's a yeah. I'm gonna try and try and clear we a path. Can, we can come out this way. We yeah. already. Okay. That guy's already taken care of. I. So I'm gonna I'm gonna manifest my wine bottle right by a moth. Okay. And smack him with it. Smack her with it. Her with sorry. Yes. Totally can smack do that. Her with it. I'll put Eric. Going over there. We don't know where he is. He invisible. Um, yeah, go for it. So roll your attack on vet with your with your mace. With my mace. Okay, let me get over there. Nine. That's not gonna hit, unfortunately. Okay. She's a little too crafty for that. All right, that's fine. Um, roll your attack for the spiritual weapon. Attack for these. Oh, I have to cast first. There we go. Okay. Uh, that's better. That'll hit. Give me damage. Wait for this. Oh, this is going to leave a mark. Mouse is not. It doesn't like me rolling too many things like right in a row. It happened. All right, her clock is cleaned. She's not out, but she's definitely shaken by this spiritual hammer that's floating, or spiritual wine bottle flying around. <laughs> that Nobody expects a spiritual her, wine bottle. Sends spiritual, like, alcohol wine spraying out into space and then loops itself back up into full form. It's dramatic. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it hits, it doesn't matter how much it hits by, it shatters and it then reforms. yeah. Every time. Every single time. It's you a shatter. The phrase, Holy form. Spirit. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Um, yes. Uh, number two is going to run here and start swinging wildly. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he, yeah. He's sure there's somebody there that is supposed to oh, not yeah, be fair. there. <laughs> and he uh, never it doesn't like he doesn't. Nothing interesting happens. But he's sure there's supposed to be somebody there. What's Nala doing? I'm gonna tell, like, I'm gonna scream at the time. Like, like, the the door's open over here. Everybody, make a run for it. <laughs> like to the peasants. Like, let's go <laughs> and try to just like cause like mass pandemonium. Give me a performance Let's, check. Like, I'm going to yell. <laughs> I'm going to yell fire in a theater. That is exactly what's happening right now. Uh, yes. Yes. That's exactly what's happening. Well, there was fire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's been fire. And yeah, but everyone's like frozen. They're like, what do we do? And I'm like, we're going to run now. Okay. Everybody run now. <laughs> Roll me a performance check. Um, I want to. Here's performance. 13. That's pretty good. 13. People are starting to move out the out the exits at your suggestion. Um, the, Do you want to take uh, any other actions? Shouting is technically a free action. Cool. I'm going to um, I'm going to run over to um, Lorelei over there since I mean, I don't think I wasn't engaged by anyone, right? No, you've got that's right there. So you, you'd have to use a disengage to get to Lorelei. Um. Otherwise, Vet's going to take a swing or I could at you. Just, or I could just run. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do it. Just use your disengage? No, I'm just going to run. Oh, okay. Vet sees you taking off. It's going to take that free shot. Because she can. She clips you as you start to, to, to back away. It hurts, um, but it I hurts. need the speed. You need to be there. All right, no problem. We'll see if that seven damage catches up with you later. Uh, I'm going to turn into a dire wolf, like literally right under her. <laughs> and literally just carry her the F out of there with my 50 move speed. 
and yeah. start moving Whatever, towards Whatever's the left of it. All right, so Woo! you get there. Um, let I'm me the wolf. find a dire wolf. Yeah. All right, I'm going to add a dire wolf onto the tracker. The dire wolf is on your action. And I'm going to put Nala as a tag and put dire wolf as a tag on Nala. There we go. So you are now one entity as you take off. Ratty, good morning. Otherwise, go to bed, dude. It's like crazy late. <laughs> um, and you are now positioned to do that. Uh, that is... Um, what's Vet doing? Vet is not cricket with what's happening. That's all I know at this moment. Uh, she is just not enjoying things. She... There's yeah. nothing good about what's happening in this area to her. This is the <laughs> worst thing that's ever happened. Yeah, this is really bad. She's going to rush up right next to you while well, she can. And then in one swift motion, um, okay, that counts. And that counts. It's going to dispatch Bandit number two. Ooh. She's not playing around. Nope. She quickly rushes up and with a series of dagger throw, uh, dagger strikes, takes him off the board. He's scary. Valentina's not cricket with the situation either. And is going to use her action to, to take a shot across the way. Uh, let's see. So she's going to be rolling t -t 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 on a hit. So she needs to roll her attack. She hits. Wow. That's a lot of damage. That takes an arrow made of pure acid. Oh. In her shoulder. And turns her attention that way furiously. Everyone, stretch really quick. A little bit. What's on your mind? Huggy. 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 Come have a hug. I love you. Mm. You smell it. You take a bath. Good for you. Have fun at school tomorrow. Okay. Good night. Says good night. Good night. Good night. <sighs> so Valentina is attacking Vet. Vet's attacking the bandits. The bandits are now. I think the bandits are now finally deciding they need to get involved. They're going to rush over it's here, bad. and cause some headaches for everybody. Oh, they haven't done much of anything yet, but now they're getting into the scrap. Uh, a moth. I think she's running out of options. She's beat up. She's annoyed. She's scared. She's... Okay, she's doing that. Wow. She is going to step right here. Actually, she's going to step right next to Vet and summon a cloud of guardians. Well. You watch as a bunch of spectral spirits rise up and start to circle around her body, lashing out at anything and everything nearby. Yes. Um, good timing. I'm just finishing the NPC's action. Pon, thank you for bringing everybody over here. We appreciate that. Uh, give me 10 seconds. I'm going to mark that this NPC is casting. I'm going to quickly mark off a 15 foot circle around her. And everyone's life just got a lot more complicated. I'll tell you what's going on here. Oh, there's a moth. 15 feet. So 15 feet is kind of like the circle around her. <laughs> is where all of these spirits are now swarming oh. as they as they go. You do not want to be here at ground zero when uh, this comes up. Les, good to see you as well. Um, hydrate for those on my team if you haven't. Uh, quick recap for the Raiders coming in since we're in the middle of a complete Charlie Fox trot of a combat. There, there's so many things happening. There's so many things happening. They're in a theater 
where they went to track down someone who had stolen the Stone of Golor, which they need for some purpose, specifically to get into the Vault of Dragons. The person who stole it, that would be that right here. She was handing it off to uh, Agorn, who was last seen standing there before he went invisible, and a moth who's standing right there. Uh, just at the climactic moment in the performance of the show, uh, the Lindwood, Lindworm, I'm sorry, Lindworm, Valentina, and a bunch of faceless bandits decided to launch a holdup of the theater. And that's where you find us. Oh, and Lorelei, the, the rogue, is currently holding a pouch she stole off that. And riding a direwolf. And riding a direwolf. That was the druid who's now a direwolf. That cover everything? Yeah, basically. All right, I feel I feel pretty good with that recap. Uh, open like a new window. Let me get that spell in front of me, so I know what you guys are going to have to deal with at the start of your turn. Um, not to mention that that the cellist was murdered. Yes, there is a dead cellist in the prop room that was murdered directly in front of Lorelai by one of the actresses because she uh, directed the actress to kill the cellist. Not exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> the actress was painfully jealous, and Lorelai said you should be jealous of the cellist. I was actually trying to imply that I was trying to date the cellist, and she misunderstood. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm pretty sure. That, I was like, that's fine. This is how it's going. We have no control over this person. She was just insane. She was like, we're just, I'm just going to kill her right here in front of you. Now you hide the body. It was pretty fun. It was pretty fun. Um, <laughs> it's it's rare that I actually can see Liz shocked into silence. And I will admit, fully worth it. 10 of 10 would repeat. Oh, yeah. And by the way, if you can spare a moment and you have the bandwidth open a tab, do it right now and throw a follow to that other pond. Um, she is She is every bit the dungeon master I am. She is every bit the streamer I am. She's she's being on her channel is like being on mine if I were an amazingly talented woman and gay. So she's yeah. That's but she's just amazing. I can't say enough nice things about her. So that being the case, um, what exactly is a moth's DC that y'all have to deal with? Just so I don't forget it. So her spell casting, that's the DC. Everyone's DCs are 13s. That's easy. Okay. Where do we leave so off? So what is swarming around her exactly? Uh, spiritual guardians? Sp spiritual guardians. It's spiritual guardians. that spell again. Lorelai, I need a wisdom save. Oh, not again. All these clerics and you. No, Ooh. you're every bit the DM I am. Don't be don't be modest. Modesty is for people oh, of youth. Slightly better. Ooh, you made it. Oh. You made it. Which means I think you don't take damage. Takes half damage. That's not so bad. Alright then. Um, is, me... Why can't I make this get out of Yeah, you only take 15 damage from that. Oh. No, wait, you take <laughs> half of that. Sorry, seven. <laughs> I would, but I have some screen on my character sheet that I, I got can't you covered on. I'll I can track it. Okay, thank you. It shows up to everybody on the the stream and stuff. Um, <laughs> by the way, as a free action, you can check the pouch you're holding. Oh. Okay, I checked the pouch. <laughs> you're holding somewhere in the ballpark of forty silver and fifty copper. No. Oh. Another wallet. Bump bump. Oh, snap. I throw it down. <laughs> uh. This isn't it. It's not it. Is it my turn? Do it's I get an it's still your turn. You can do whatever you want. You might want to get out of the zone of deadly spirits, but... Do. How injured is this thief that we've been, that theoretically has the stone or knows where it is? She's pretty good shape. 
She's still <laughs> technically in the light, in the dark green level of hurt. She hasn't even moved into bloodied yet, which would be the halfway mark. I would also point out that the cleric casting that spell that's making life uncomfortable for everybody is in bloodied. She is past the halfway half, mark. Right? Yeah, but that can beat up all these other people we don't like. <laughs> I'm like half of it, like, let's just get out of it. All right, let's see just... how much damage she could do and then and then hop back in. Okay. Spirit Guardians is my least favorite spell to adjudicate, but my favorite to cast. Go ahead. Oh, good. I'm gonna... Amoth is casting Spirit Guardians? Yes, she is. Okay. I'm going to chuck a dagger at her. <laughs> Roll it. Ugh. You haven't used any rerolls yet. He said. Is it worth a reroll for a dagger? No. It's up to you. <laughs> Shan thinks so. Huh? Shan seems to think so. <laughs> but it's up to you. Otherwise, we can... Well, you know what? Of... It's a nasty spell. Okay. What do you guys think? You're you're trying to hit a moth with the... Yeah. To disrupt the um, nastiness that's happening. It's... It's up to you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit her with all I've got on my turn. If I can. Reasonable. We can see what happens next. You can still move, too. Or you can wait for the dire wolf's action to ride. Well, I not do anything happening. Choices, choices, choices. Clock's ticking. Oh, kind of Six seconds. Ways. Okay, okay, okay. Um. <sighs> and we. Nope, that's it. That, that's it. I don't know. All right. Toughen it out. Ride the dire wolf when they leave. Yep. All right. Fair enough. Um, can I hold that? At, can I hold? No, I can't. Never mind. I threw a dagger. That's it. That's all I got. Okay, I'm done. Okay. That happens. Uh, let's see. She makes her save, takes some damage. Uh, I think what she is actually going to do is she's going to rush over at a moth and attack her herself. Enough, enough with this spell casting thing. She's just had it. She swings that uh, that snake staff over her head. Spins it around a couple of times. Oh. Ooh. Okay. That's not a lot. Let's see what happens. And oh. Bank. No more spirit guardians. Oh. Okay. The spirit guardians have been dispelled. So get those off the board. And that's her action. Uh, what's Shakira doing? Ooh, well, she's going to take a deep breath first. Uh, <laughs> all right. So a moth is donezo. Uh, she's still standing just, there, but the spell just... has broken. She can't focus on summoning all of those nasty ghosts and specters anymore. Someone beating on her with a staff. I mean, I... I totally get that. Yeah, it's hard to stay focused in those moments. Um, I would like to position myself here, if I may. Just move move this direction so I'm out of the line of fire there. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what to do because they're not actively seeking us, but we still don't have the stone either. But I don't want to just kill everybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could, but uh, now, now we're in the hard part. We're like, do we just do we just kill everybody? I guess that's the thing. Like, do we want to? My choice, I, I feel like, is kind of intertwined with a group. Is that I don't want to necessarily just yeet everyone. So. I mean, you could focus on keeping a, a way clear to the door. 
If you're looking for relatively guilt-free targets, the bandits and the Lindworm came in here to murder, every, to, to rob everybody, possibly murder them as well. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. Actually, um, about the only potentially innocent actor on the page right now is a moth who's about to die. And she just yeah, I was dropped, about to say, the only person. <laughs> she dropped a tactical nuke on top of everybody. So Yeah, all of the <laughs> civilians here too. So it's like... Innocence is in question. Most innocent enemy is still not, you know, necessarily. Wait, what is the thief's name? Valentine, uh, that is the one with the mask. Okay. Hmm, so we're saying that I should just finish a moth off. <laughs> Yeah, you, you do also, you. You do you. Do like, violence, do violence. You could also. There's like, also a spellcaster like all the way across the room. In case anybody tries to block us out, yeah. I could do that. You could hold your action in case somebody attacks us or tries to get in the way of the door. We still need to shake down that thief and get the friggin' stone. That's also valid. Yeah, I think for now, I because I'm not sure what. I don't know. I, I'm wondering if I should get rid of these guys or keep the door open because nobody else is in between. Uh, you just position yourself in the door and hold action if anybody shows up. Yeah, that'll be fine. That'll work. That's that's viable. We don't know what Ed Gordon's doing. Hold the door. Oh, that's oh yeah, Mister Invisible. Bandit <laughs> I four is not sure what he's doing either. <laughs> I was pretty sure that about just ran away. Just like you know what, he's, I'm out. He's having issues. Chrysanthemum has an action. Uh, I'm kind of surrounded by enemies, so I'm gonna I'm gonna scooch back a couple of. Well, actually, that'll get me in. I'm gonna. Op- you're you're get still crawling attack? around on the floor. Okay. So give yeah, I'm gonna stealth, sc- give me a quick stealth check. What the heck? Okay. Roll That's a stealth. Fair. Roll a stealth. <laughs> with disadvantage. Under these circumstances, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> Definitely Nor- not. Okay, that's fair. Oof. Okay. They yeah, they'll see you if you start crawling away. Okay. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna just stay put. Um question a uh, mechanics question. Can mechanics. I can I hold my main action but use my bonus action with my spiritual weapon? Yes, you can. What would you like to smack okay. with the spiritual weapon? I am going to smack Vet because I heard, I'm going to assume I heard um, Lorelei holler and throw her little tantrum, throw the couch on the ground <laughs> or whatever. Um, so I'm going to smack um, Vet with the bottle of wine and I'm going to prepare, Boom. I'm going to prepare prepare my mace and hold an action if somebody notices me or makes a move to attack me. Okay. Uh, Roll your attack with the bottle of wine. Perfect. Yep. That's much better. Ooh, Ooh, damage. I see Okay. We're doing great on these damage rolls. We're doing great with the damage rolls, man. Three whole damage. And so you're holding. What is our dire wolf doing? Uh, I'm going to start and uh, I'm going to attack Vet. Okay. Uh, with, so she's threatened by my allies. So I'm going to just try <laughs> to, you know, get advantage and then also try to drag her to the ground. Okay. Roll it. She's sending by to make her strength check. That'll hit. I was like, I hope it's so. And what's the damage look like? Eh, a lot, usually. Why wolf's so scary? 2d6 Ooh. plus 3. Yeah, that's all I damage. That's not that tough. Uh, wow. Six damage. We really, we are, are, we really like are stinking on these Rolling dice for crap tonight on the damage uh. front. Um, and she holds her. She stays upright. Ugh. Um, she's still on her feet. I was feet. gonna just be like, "Let's leave," but like, no eh. way. 
We don't have any. We can't really leave at this point. Okay. I'm uh, really just... glad we didn't leave though Wait. and find out we grabbed her purse and not the stone. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, her action. She is not taking any actions this turn. She's putting her hands up. And she has one thing to say. She uses her free action to go, Hello, officer. <laughs> you glance over your shoulders, and there are two members of the town watch standing in the hallway. Great. <laughs> of course they are. Valentina, whose action is next, is going to head right out that side door. Whoop. And make like the wind. The bandits will also put their hands up. As will a moth. Lorelai, you have one action left. If you want to take it. Um... Is this a door right by me? The stair the staircase? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna bolt. Bolt out the door? Oh yeah. Cool. As is the lindworm. As you guys make your way down the alleyway, you watch a several town guard come up. You wanna give me a quick ro uh stealth check? As the rogue bolts. Right. Oh, yeah. Something well. Thank goodness. Yeah. The rogue bolts out the door and immediately like makes like a piece of garbage. As the guards <laughs> walk right past her. Appears. Context, it makes sense. It does. <sighs> and thus ends the mass melee. Oh boy. Everyone has a chance to breathe. I'm going to shift into a position of like, like I'm just trying to hide and not get like pummeled. Um, but can I, can I look really, can I take a quick look at vet and identify any particular item on her? Like identify her cloak, something she's wearing. Sure. Oh, like take a really good talk of what she looks like. So you can like a even, really good. So you can become familiar with it. So I could become familiar with something she's something distinguishable that she has on her person. While you're talking to the members of the of the watch, you can yes familiarize yourself with her cloak. Okay. Absolutely. That would work. Um, Go about this a different way. I, I like your thinking. I like where <laughs> you're going. I respect it. Um, to your shock and amazement, Vet will speak quickly and openly to the guards and identify the three of you as being potential deputies for their actions in stopping this robbery and commends you. Well, that's a plot twist. The, the guards seem suspicious and immediately pat her down for contraband and find nothing other than the blades that she had snuck in and give her a firm talking to about bringing weapons into a theater. She mentions a missing coin purse, which she thinks she dropped in the corner. <laughs> hmm. The guards mostly take to this story. The bandits that they're able to question seem to shockingly corroborate the story because, well, they don't know what's going on. And, and you have the opportunity, if you want to say anything else, uh, to the guards during this questioning period. I'm going to introduce myself in my normal manner and thank them for their timely arrival. I'm very happy to, that pleased to have been of service. And da 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 um, Amoth is looking a little worse for wear, but she also, like, at first she starts to say something, and then she catches Vet's eye, and Vet's like, mm, shut up. And, <laughs> and then she starts to echo the, it was a big misunderstanding, there was some some 
unintentional familiar fire spent about, um, which can happen. And you notice like the smoldering chairs. And everyone kind of glances at Shakira, who kind of glances away. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lorelai has a chance to take stock of the alley. And uh, you can s easily spot the boot prints of the lindworm as she ran out one direction. And you spot another set of boot prints in the fresh snow that go out the alley and out to the main road. Creeping along, Lorelai looks around and it's a, a station where people have pulled up handsome cabs to ferry people around Waterdeep. A little bit of conversation with one of the cabbies identifies that a, a man seemed to spring forth directly from the shadow, looking panicked and harried, hired a cab and took off towards the uh, another part of town. Guessing that's our invisible dude. And we'll have to uh, mm -hmm. pick up his trail next week. Ah! <laughs> Ah, it couldn't be this easy. <laughs> oh, that was a lot of fun, though. Really Lots bad at twists. robbing people. <laughs> we just need to practice, you know. I know this would have been the night to have two rogues. This <laughs> well, I successfully <laughs> robbed her. It just she didn't have the item. Yeah, you you robbed possession. her fight. It just yeah. It just wasn't what we just didn't rob her accurately enough. Like we robbed her successfully. It just wasn't Ac the right you thing. Had, you Accurate had, versus successful. Pre precision versus accuracy. Right, there exactly. We you were we precise. succeeded at, at stealing. We just didn't steal the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. well, I lost huh. it, Liz. So we just we just didn't no, I stopped talking because I can't think and talk at the same time apparently. <laughs> So she handed it off and we didn't see it? Apparently. Probably. Oh. Man. Or she swallowed it. I mean, we could cut her open Ooh. and see. Ew. <laughs> hey, just get the actress. Right. Oh, no. I'll just stay in wolf form and just. She could have stashed Ooh. it somewhere. She could have come in and stashed it somewhere. It it could be the handoff wasn't meant to be like right there. It could right, be right, right. That's true. She might well, have not heavily applied that it was on her person. Like that's what we were kind of digging for before everything yeah, I guess went that's true. nuts. There was all that conversation though about the the handoff. It's something that had to happen. Yeah. So I think it's a safe assumption that yes, you're going to find yourselves following a handsome cab. Yeah. All right. Yep. Which oh, should be well. fun. That's fair. It should be fun ish. <laughs> ish. <sighs> I think I familiarized myself with the wrong person. <laughs> well, we could track her. You're going to lead somewhere. That's true. This, yeah, this is true. This is true. But if but, she doesn't lead anywhere, it's like we can ask what she knows. She's got to know something, right? Assuming she hangs around long enough for you to question. Yeah, we we proved to be not very good at chasing her. So. <laughs> ah, all right. So as we start to wind things down tonight, so we're at ten o'clock. It's about the usual time we wrap up. Let's go back around the table with our reintroductions, um, and what your star moment of the night was. And we'll go the reverse order. So we'll start with Arwen. Hi, I'm Arwen Atreides, and I played Chrysanthemum Coriolis. Um, I had a lot of fun just scooting around underneath chairs and just like taking out people from under chairs. That was, you know, my my inner my inner seven year old. I had got a kick out of that. But I think the real star of the moment was that surprise spontaneous murder <laughs> that nobody saw coming and was just that was like, insane. what? <laughs> What is happening? That was, I think that was my star moment. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll go over to Ari. Hi, I'm Akio Ari. <laughs> I was playing a Sharkira. Oh, man. That was also my star of the night because, you know, she just comes out with this girl and she's like, oh, hey, this is so and so and death. <laughs> destruction <laughs> like i was totally not expecting that and i didn't know whether to giggle 
or if that would make me feel sound like a terrible person. But even then, Lorelai just like, okay, I guess I'm just going to move this body now. It's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. That was fantastic. <laughs> Fair enough. Head <laughs> up to Spinny. Um, I I just really enjoyed them kicking open the doors and just. Everyone be cool. This is a robbery. It's like, all right, here we go. <laughs> Everything has gotten a lot more complicated. And um, that was uh, that was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, where did Liz? Oop, that's not what I want. I want upper left. There we go. Uh, I, my star moment was that I almost got to ride a dire wolf out of the theater. Yeah, I that totally was, wanted to oh, do that. That was amazing. You just shouldn't have checked the. If you wouldn't have checked the pouch, we would have been gone. I'm telling you oh, right man. now. I know. Yeah. We'd have been running down the street with the wrong thing. We've been having. <laughs> we got time. it. Yeah. <laughs> Slow motion high five in there. And this is how you know Dramir was not with us tonight because if he had seen you throw a bag of money to the ground in disgust, he would have had to have had words with you. <laughs> right? yeah. But you don't just throw that away. It's just muddy. We don't want that. Or he would have like, he would have just, well, first he would have picked it up on the sly on his way out the door and then let you have it. He would have thrown one of the coins at your head. It's like, don't do that again. This is why we do this. <laughs> it is kind of why we do this. Idea. It is kind of, oh. Is kind of why we do this. Um, okay. So we need a place to go tonight. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to try to stall for a couple minutes because I want to see it, how long of a pre-roll this person uses. Um, if they come on in the next three minutes while we're kind of talking and closing up shop, we're going to raid there. Otherwise I'm going to raid in a different direction. Um, the person I'm planning to raid out to, um, her stream name is Melody420. She has been popping in on my um, Beat Saber streams in the morning and offering really kind advice. And she's a very established Beat Saber streamer. So I've been very honored and flattered that she's taken some time to offer me some tutelage. Um, but I also do not like to raid into a stream that hasn't officially started yet. So I'm going to give her a few seconds to get there. Um, for me, I just had so much fun tonight watching all of your faces mm. at every far-fetched yet perfectly plausible plot twist whether it was the robbery which i had planned well in advance because i knew that because <laughs> in the actual written campaign this is a short stop off you chase her along the rooftops she buys a ticket runs into the theater you chase her into the theater you see the potential handoff and then they scatter and it, it kind of says in the directions the party can picks one to follow and the stone is with the other one. Sure. That's just kind of the way it's set up. Um, and I'm like, no, 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 no. First we have to sp split this over two nights. So, okay. We need to have some build up to it. Second twist. I can have way too much fun with this. <laughs> and, and I'm the, glad you did. <laughs> and, and the thought of like interrupting the handoff with a robbery was like such a beautiful like conf you know, con convergence of chaos. I'm like, this will be fun to run. Uh, the murder, the murder, ha the murder was conceived about 30 seconds before it happened. <laughs> Surprised it was a murder. I thought it was going to be like a broken <laughs> arm or something, or I just but no, straight up murder. <laughs> I, I thought she wanted to take her out, but I, I not right there at that moment. Yeah, I was thinking I, like I a thought it was sleeping like, pill in her tea or hustle her out into the alley and we'll do her in or something. Not like this one yet. <laughs> what? She's gonna have to come back. I need her. To, she needs to make another appearance <laughs> in this game somewhere. I just she... love how that fits into the whole Strahd the musical that we had going on. <laughs> Like, uh, geez, I I'm not gonna lie. I I it took me a second because I've I've read this adventure a dozen some times, but the fact that this is that the the play they are producing tonight is they they have the full plot here of of the play being put on, um, 
and it is yeah it is it is crazy and hilarious and just it's a beautiful shout out um to to what's going on uh we're still in pre-roll so uh we're gonna go instead we have lots of great people we can drop in on and i know that we want to continue to support and show our love um to the reluctant hermit um he's had some ups he's had some downs he is an incredibly kind soul i love to share my community with his because again he is just such a great human being and it's always uh, good to support him in that. He also made his application for partner last week. So we can give him a few shout outs for that. Because pretty much once you get your invitation to apply, you are pretty much on that final road. Um, and it's really exciting to see a lot of my friends who are, who are hitting those milestones. And, and because they're all great people. They're all people I love to have. He and I are still working on getting him to the D&D table. Hasn't happened yet. But I think now that we've got kind of Ari hooked... She and I can get the hermit to the table. I think that's the missing piece. I think I just needed Ari on my side. And we were going to make that happen. So give him all of our love. I'm going to hang out with my players. We're going to talk a little bit like we always do. Um, if you're a subscriber, when you come on the raid, pl feel free to have Yoda wave at him, the baby Yoda, Grogu. And, uh, and we'll see everybody the next time we get together. Wednesday night, I'm back here for The Convergence. Uh, which starts at 7 p.m. And that is another game that has taken some fun plot twists and turns. Hope you guys can join us then. Until then, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stay safe.